Hello? <laughs> Happy 4th of July, everyone. Um, why is... I opened Disco and it's just blasting me in the ears. So loud. So loud, man. Okay. Let's see. Doo -doo. Okay, everything's looking kosher. Did you me or did it suddenly get really steamy in here? She's hot. Um, it's like 80 degrees already. What the hell? It's 10 a.m. <laughs> I feel like it was just last stream that I was like, oh, the heat wave is gone. Yay. It was a lie. A lie. Okay. Everything's gonna be fine. Did I already say happy 4th of July? Happy 4th of July to anybody who cares about it. I don't know. It's never been one of those, like, American holidays that like we care about in my house um my grandma was from New York and she immigrated to Spain and the I think the only like American holiday that we would do every single year and it was like a big deal was Thanksgiving which is so American of her props to her don't care about it I do not accept your good wishes for Thanksgiving or 4th of July? I didn't realize you were supposed to wish people good wishes uh, for 4th of July. Thanksgiving is cool, not 4th of July. Got it. I mean, 4th of July is cool because you get to watch um, Independence Day, right? I think it's like the only like day of the year where the movie is available. Some people are scared of fireworks. Side eye. I hope you're side eyeing our dog because I'm not <laughs> scared of fireworks. <laughs> I just get like royally annoyed at fireworks when they're going off and it's not 4th of July. Okay. So I'm like, I'm feeling very violent the week before and the month after 4th of July. Because there's just fireworks. And it's like, I get it. You overspent, okay? You spent $400 in fireworks and now you don't know what to do with them. So you just have to like, let it all out, man. But you're always feeling violent? Okay. That's true. I am who I am. I am who I am and I cannot lie. Okay. Let me just... We mute the music. We unmute the game. That's happened. I don't know if it was blasting because of this, but I remember um, a couple times while I've been playing disco, um, the music used randomly gets like extremely loud for absolutely no reason. <laughs> And I, I don't know, like, how I fixed it. It was like a stupid fix, like, pause and unpause, or, like, m mute the music in settings and unmute it. But it, it's really funny every time, because there's, like, um, a couple seconds where it's just, like, a crescendo of the music getting significantly louder, and then it stays. And you're like, what the fuck? Like, there's nothing happening. I'm just trying to read, like, what's his name? M Meatball's uh, rant that makes no sense. Meatball? Meat 
Beater. Neat. M muscle. Muscle head. Neat head. I don't know. You know, right? But yeah, the music is still really loud. Calm down. Measure head. Yeah. Yeah, that guy. He sucks ass. Do you hear that? Do you hear how loud that music is? I've been turning it down this whole time. Yeah, it loud. I don't know what that happens. That's still pretty loud, but we'll take it. Um, I think we just finished talking to this lady, right? I thunk so. This boat is floating freely in the water, unmoored. Okay. Um, all right. Recap. It is Wednesday morning, which means we got access to, like, half the map, and there's shit tons of people to talk to, and I'm feeling overwhelmed and confused. Um, goal number one is to take down public enemy number one. Her name is Cindy. Um, I believe she has a network of little orphaned criminals or something. I don't know. I don't know what she's up to, but I will take her down. It's only a matter of time. You can't see into the house from this angle. It's locked tight. Okay. Money! I- that's the- okay. One nitpick about the game is that they've done such a good job at painting, like, you know, a, a town in poverty. Like, obviously, this place is a shithole um by definition and yet i keep finding change in random places and just like on the ground did the people that made this game never have they never been poor you pick up those coins when you see them on the floor unless it's a 50 dollars bill in which case you don't touch it because it's too suspicious a flower trod where nothing really grows maybe in spring or do you see the detail the colors all the warmth and welcoming are cozy though. Haha. Uh -huh. Okay. This lady is speaking significant gibberish. Inside you hear the cozy sound of some kind of heater sputtering. Did he just say the word cozy twice? That's weird. Hi. The woman next to a bucket of clothes hums an odd melody. Her eyes are closed. Welcome to the fishing village. Please lean in closer. I have cataract. <laughs> uh, like a dog. You can't see. Then how did you know I was here? Um, Because I'm fat and I stop. Come on. Michael. What's his name? We learned his name. Something stupid. Like Michael. Hold on. I must know. It must be somewhere, right? What's my name? Oh, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Um, lean forward. Oh, welcome, police officer. We don't cause any trouble around here. And we don't want any trouble either. We are not here to cause any trouble, madame. <laughs> oh, Kim. Trouble? Say the second oh, thing, Gantan. Shows you got style. <sighs> My necktie. <laughs> It's the oddest times to say crazy shit. We're just talking to an old lady. Why why get riled up? What he said, we're cops. We don't cause trouble. We take care of trouble. We're cops. We're hell racers. Click, click, bang, bang. I'm not going to say that. I'm going to give this lady a heart attack. Oh, of course. Last time we saw you around here was 12 years ago. You also came to take care of trouble then. Wish you did, but still, in Martinez, you're considered an <laughs> ill omen. Can you imagine that? Oh, yeah, last time I saw a police officer was... God, has it been 12 years already? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, wait, I've been here? Oh, she means me? Oh. No, not you Oh, okay, yeah, no, that's... I met my... the RCM. Some yep. of the men got into a fight. One of them killed another, locked himself in that woodshed over there. 
She points to the building behind her. <gasps> the one that I've called Cozy twice? That's crazy. He was boarding. Did some help opening the door. You got it open for him. It Wait, took him me? to think about what he'd done in a more secluded place. Somewhere more quiet. Was it or wasn't it me? I'm so confused. No, not you personally. Okay. She's just referring to me as the police. Cool, 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 cool. What kind of ill omen are we talking about? I am an ill omen. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, let's just ask her. Oh, the usual. Dark tidings. Black hound. Hellfire. The usual. That's you, all right. A black hound licking your own heels. Okay. Um, I'm considered an ill omen. Why hasn't anyone told me that? I feel like everyone has, though. Just not with those specific words. Um, I am an ill omen, all You're right. Not. Oh. No one around here considers us an ill omen. People would have told us. Never mind. I guess nobody told us that we're ill omens. Just reading too much into people's words. Maybe they are afraid. Why? Because you're an ill omen. But you're still welcome here. As long as men with guns aren't chasing you. And maybe even then. Because that's the kind of fishing village we've built. The kind where police get chased around with by men with guns? That's nice. I'm sorry there's not a lot of room to park the motor carriage. <laughs> and not a lot of houses. Or a lot of people. My kids are long gone. Searching for treasure. So are others. There's not a lot of room to park. That's why I parked in the water. Ah, look at me ramble on. What brings you to us? Um, where could someone stay around here? Stay? Most people here are trying to leave. That said, if lodgings is what you're looking for, I've got a free room in the shack. Her soapy thumb points to the building behind her. Okay. The the build the the cozy building? <coughs> How much is I it? I will charge you for it. Take it as a gesture of goodwill from the village to the RCM. What a kitty! Can I move here instead of staying at the hotel so I don't have to pay that idiot every day? Wait, hold on, you're just giving it to me? I'm not sure if it's appropriate for the RCM to accept free accommodations. Shut the fuck up. There's this guy, Garte, who makes me give him money every night just so I don't die out in the cold. <laughs> it's cozy. We we thought that, yes. No one is using it and God knows it's not much anyway. You can stay there. Oh my god. Oh my god. I mean, I am, right? I don't see any downside to this. Well, I just have to, like, walk a long time to get to the party, but... But I get to amass wealth. I'll take it. Don't make an old woman regret opening her house to the police. The key appears from under her apron. She hands well, it to you. if you are not in the hostel in the morning, I know where to find you. Here, looks around and ants. Here in a shack. Oh, wait, no. I'm not going to be neighbors with Kim anymore. Our romance is gonna have to take a, a step back. He's a little relieved you're no longer in that room. Oh, well, fuck you too. What? Should he? This environment encourages one thing and one thing only. Drinking. What do you mean in this cozy ass village? Who would ever get depressed? I think, okay, I'm gonna choose to think that he's relieved that I'm no longer in that room because there was like a broken window and it's the middle of winter. Not because he Finally, hates me. you have those lamos of Martinez off your back, Bratan. This looks like a great place to bring chicks. Oh my god, dude. What is in this fishing village? That's Just a weird us. question. It's barely a village anymore. We almost don't exist. What do you mean? This is pretty much a non-place. A gap. A blank spot on the map. Just a cluster of nameless shacks on a nameless street. There's got to be something here. Tell me. Over there, you can find more of the same. Shacks and trees growing wild. That's the pox. Between here and Jamrock, a dusty sea of old trees, all covered in industrial soot. Small houses under them, an overgrown park. 
The parks, what is that? An old military hospital and its surroundings. Or it used to be during the time of the suzerain. Okay. After the war, it was turned into a goodwill hospital for shell shock veterans and folks looking for some quiet in the old sanatorium gardens. Now the area is crisscrossed with nameless streets and makeshift cinder block houses. Shacks as far as the eye can see. What happened to the hospital? The goodwill ran out. The staff left and the place was shut down. It's long gone by now. Who else lives in this village? Well, there's Lillian and her kids. A few new folks live in the house to the east. But they are away right now. New folks? Would that be the, the, the bug guy and his friend? And then there's the drugs. Not a pretty sight, but there's little we can do about it. Home is home, even for them. I met Lillian already. Lillian is tough. Tougher than the men here, at least. If it wasn't for her and the kids, this place wouldn't have a spark of life left. I haven't seen any drunks yet, though, except myself. Sooner or later, you'll see for yourself. Don't have to look long to find these guys. Uh, is there a way to make a little money around here? Why would I ask that? In a poor fishing village that's barely a village. That's weird. Maybe she... Oh my god, can you imagine if she gives me a fishing rod and this turns into Stardew Valley? Um, I let's just... I'm, I have to. Here? For you? No, <laughs> officer. The only money we have here is some coins the drunks tried hiding from their women and then forgot about. See, that's what I expected. The, that's that's the answer that makes sense. That would be fun. Yeah, I would love to to, to have a fishing mini game. All right, there's another topic I'd like she to address. Rinsing another piece of cloth. What is further down the coast? Not much. Where's the abandoned church, the Dolorian Church of Humanity? It's been there since before my time. Even is that the church that's like out on the water? Why is it abandoned? Some things just don't fly, officer. Look around. Who'd go to church here? They built it 300 years ago. Must have been nicer then. So, they don't hold services there anymore? The Ecclesiastes? No, we've tried, but things just keep happening. Crime, accidents, other things. The place never stays open. It's a pity. It used to be such a nice church. What's She's that? not telling you all she knows. <gasps> Keep her talking. Okay, empathy. Um, I get the feeling you're leaving stuff out. I just call her out on it. Um, what else is down the coast? Before you get to the church, there's some ruins, an apartment complex, or some kind of electrical plant. Run down bunch of houses, empty. Okay. Um, which is it then? Apartments or electrical plants? I don't know exactly. A pre-war place. It used to be something. Before the war. I wasn't here then, you know. Was born in Samara. Um, anything else of note? Of note? The old fish market up on the boardwalk. But it's closed. Who'd want to come to a fish market here? Who'd want to be rude to an old lady, I wonder? Um, that's it. There's got to be more along the coast. What? You're one of those real estate people <laughs> with big plans? If you want a development opportunity, you can check out the abandoned building over at Land's End. Land's End? It used to be a supply depot, we think. Sending goods <laughs> and ammo across the bay. It's jam shut though. We tried to get in, see if there was anything to sell or scavenge, but it's impossible. A challenge? And now you know everything there is to know about this coast. He drops a bar of soap into the bucket with a splash. Um, tell me about yourself. Who exactly... Uh, wh uh, who exactly are you here? Me? That's a weird question. No one. She's Just the crazy old, old lady woman. like a Moana. Mother called me Isabel, if that's what you're asking. And my married name is Sadie. 
Sadie. Married name is Sadie? As in a last name? Or she can she changes her first name when she gets married? Now it's your turn, Mr. <laughs> Lieutenant Double Friend, you're Harrier Dubois. Can you imagine? Wait, no, the, uh, the Raphael Ambrosius Cousteau was my original fake name. Wait, is this my actual name? Harry. Yeah, that's a dumb name, like Michael, right? It's a you, Harry. My last name is Dubois. That's kind of yucky. Why the handle you got there? So many titles. <laughs> One of them double. <laughs> She's got a couple of ranks herself. On a chief and so on. Uh, goodbye. I'm off. All right. <coughs> is this my house now? The door has seen better days. The layer of paint has started to peel off due to the salt and wind from the sea. Even the lock looks slightly rusted. Unlock the shector with the key. I'll wait outside to give you some time and privacy to check out your new living arrangement. But just so you know, after we are done with the day, I'll still be staying in the whirling in rags for the night. We'll meet in front of the shack in the morning. What, Kim? You don't wanna... You don't wanna sip in my room tonight? What? Who would have thought? The key turns with a satisfying click. You can enter the shack now. I just think it's funny that he thought he needed to clarify that he's not staying in this room with me. I see you, Kim. I see you. I don't know, I think it's uh, significantly nicer than the room at the hotel. This intricate heat engine hums quietly, giving out pleasant warmth. The floorboards creak under your step. Old science fiction magazines, books about bird watching and almanac from 39. A brisk coastal wind still howls against the window of the shack. Occasionally, the waves crawl in under the foundation, producing a low hum. A the room feels muffled, like you pulled your hat over your ears. Outside, it is cold and windy, but you're inside. And it feels safe and warm. See, it looks like my psyche loves this place. What this is a win. Is this place to you? Oh. Who is that? Who said that? Um. Oh God. My forward base for the coastal part of the operation. It's free. That's good enough. I could live here. It looks like this is my new home. Wonder where the old one went. I just become a member of this community. Can you imagine? I'll be the local cop. Westward, across the canal, towers the whirling in rags. Door number one on the second floor is locked. Behind it lies a trashed room. One floor below, behind the counter, stands an irritable man. Is he describing that this is my old home? In a small shack in the fishing village, a Baroque heater hums quietly emanating a sense of comforting warmth. A wash basin lies on the table, the water inside reflecting the somber face of the world. Far away, on the corner of Perdition and the Main, a nondescript building, obscured in a haze. It's vacant and lost, just like its tenant. Okay, I understand the first paragraph and the second paragraph, but what is this? What are we talking about here? Also, shit, let me move my camera so that it's not in the way of the top. Looking good. Perfect. There we go. Um, Nondescript building obscured in a haze. It's vacant and lost just like its tenants. I don't know what that's about. Um, thank you, Strange Sensation, for a fair assessment of the current situation. Outside. The howl of the wind has picked up. The waves crash against the stilts again. It's as if you think the thought, but in someone else's voice. Look under the floorboards. Okay, creepy voice. I will. On the table, you see a bowl of water 
of rough soap, and next to it, a small hand mirror. A straight razor soaks inside the wash basin. Is shaving the right call? I don't know. We could be uncovering some really spooky stuff the if we shave. Reflects back a vague image of your face. Nose bulbous and red. Hair unkempt. Wrinkles lining the eyes and forehead. The stash is gigantic. The stash? You'll be looking like a pansy without the chops. A fucking pansy. Okay, physical instrument. You can go fuck yourself. Maybe I'll maybe I'll shave just because of you. Just because you said that. I don't want to be looking unkept. Or unkempt. Is that a word? Or is that a misspelling? I don't know. Let's fucking do it. Like an artist with <gasps> a brush or a master swordsman, you use the small mirror and Oh, do I regret razor this? With some soap to remove all that unkempt hair from below the nose line. I'm scared. It's just like an artist with a brush or a master swordsman. So this has to look good, right? I don't remember if I passed the check. Let's see. The sharp blade chafes against your skin, producing a scratching sound. The surface underneath the beard feels tender. The air brushing against it, chilly. Everyone made fun of you? What? I don't want people to make fun of me more than usual. Fuck. Um, feel your clean shaven cheeks. Oh, maybe you failed the check, but you still shaved, and that's why everyone made fun of you. Um, feel your clean shaven cheeks. They feel so smooth, surprisingly <gasps> so. A feeling of freshness overcomes you, as if you just came from a cold bath. Okay. Was shaving the right call? I the think so. reflects back a vague image of your clean shaven face. Ew, my portrait! Despite the bulbous nose, unkempt hair, and persistent swelling, you look a little younger, maybe. Well, I don't know. This looks satanic. Like, that's scary. I, uh, ooh, I don't know if I should have shaved. The beardless nature of your cheeks makes the expression seem even more like a terrifying Yeah, face. that's what I'm saying. Suggestions, suggestion knows what's going on. Oh, God. An old mirror hangs on the wall. You see your reflection in it. The expression fixed to your clean-shaven face. You're still not accustomed to it. He's gross either way. Yeah, shaving was not going to make a difference. Encyclopedia formidable. Dig deep into your mind to locate the source of the expression. Very, very low. I don't know about that one. Electrochemistry impossible 18. Attempt to stop the expression from happening. Wow, I get a plus one because I'm shaved and it's still 3%. Fuck you, electrochemistry. That's probably because I've never listen to it most likely oh my new jacket mm. but i like my uniform i have so much stuff kingdom of conscience Wait, why am I wearing these stupid ass pants that give me plus one electrochemistry? Why would I ever want that? I'm, I'm changing that right now to plus one kingdom of the conscience moralist pants, maybe? I, I don't know. Do I have any cop pants? I don't think so. All right, moralist it is. There we go. Perception. Perception is nice. But the shoes give me indirect modes of taxation, so I can't switch them out. There's one pants say, said got ass. <laughs> Which? <laughs> what? I'm gonna go with they're absolutely unremarkable. I really like that. Um, and then my jacket. Oof. I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do it. I also can't replace my necktie. Otherwise, I feel like it might choke me. 
All right, we're, we're, we're good like this. Mm. These are some wonderfully regular pants. <laughs> not too tight, not too loose, moderate in every sense. You'll blend right in at some pleasant dinner party. Perfect. See, I'm clean shaving. Shaven. I have the most regular pants. This is perfect. I'm moving up in the world. I like regular, normal things. Mm -hmm. I know you do. These inter pants are like wearing a perfect compromise in your nether regions. No one will call the moral intern on you like this. That's for sure. The moral intern. The, the, is this supposed to be the moral intern? All right, well, we're moving more on. Moralist now, buddy. A little more normal, even if you didn't want to be. I don't want to be. Joke's on you. We don't want to sleep yet, do we? The bed is comforting, if a bit run down. Still, you've earned a rest. No time to rest yet. Oh, hey, Natty, how's it going? Happy scaring dogs day. Happy scaring dogs day. Uh, how uh, how do how do your animals deal with Fourth of July? Um, Misty Misty has lived a couple Fourth of Jul July, so I don't think she cares. Um, Lily does not have a good time, however. Oh hey, I can go into this place too. There's a child. Okay, I thought the child might have a baby. It's just a it's just a plushie. Um, it feels warm, safe and warm in here, not like outside. Um, funny you mentioned that Lily wanted to go outside. Poor girl doesn't understand. <laughs> she really doesn't. Anti-hero hood, thanks for the follow. Welcome, buddy. Hagrid doesn't like it. Luna doesn't seem to hear them. So Lily, our dog, bless her heart, is really fucking stupid. Um, and so she gets scared about the fireworks. And so she's asking to go outside, not understanding that they're going to be significantly louder when she goes outside. It's like really pathetic because then the second you open the door, she's like, ah! <laughs> it, it just feels really bad. Oh. Take. Why well, just steal their decor? Fuck it, I guess. What? Hello, mister. Hello, mister. A young girl, barely four or five years old, sits on the sofa. She's looking at you with frank curiosity. She clutches a small stuffed animal. Occasionally, she twirls it around. Um, are you Lillian's daughter? Yes, I am. Little Lily. You know my mom? Uh, yes, we met earlier. That's nice. My mom is great. I agree. She's never angry or anything. I don't know. I okay. I hate. I I have very strong opinions on people who name the, their children after themselves. Like I just think it's like lazy, uninspired, and extremely like. I don't know. It's giving like God complex. But if your name is uh, Lillian and your daughter's name is Little Lily, that's kind of cute. I I kind of I kind of vibe with that. I, I'll put my prejudice aside for this. Um, what's this? Show her the stuffed bird you took from the ceiling. Why would I? I I stole that. That's not mine. I'm not gonna show it to her. What's that thing you're holding? Point at her it's toy. It's Lammy. He's my friend. So, like, she holds the fussy beast up to demonstrate. Lamby is a stuffed lamb that, admittedly, has seen better days. One of the eye buttons is missing, and the fur is tattered in several parts. He's well loved. <laughs> Lamby looks like he's falling apart. Stop. Um, Lamby looks soft. Oh, okay. Well, pleased to meet you, Lamby. Is she trying to get me to role play with it? Hold on. Um, mm, she's she's young enough. Let's let's do it. This kid is so cute. Oh Lamy, my god! I know. Like strangers, but you're also fuzzy like Lammy. Wait, why did she call me fussy? I literally just shaved. What the hell? It's okay. She's cute. We'll we'll let it slide. 
Um, what's this? Show her this stuff, bird. Why? Okay, I'll do it's it. It's a grouse. She yelled, smiling broadly. You might be able to get on God's good side if you replace the broker skewer. You almost certainly broke. Oh, I'm excited about that. To get Guard Tay to like me, I would be unstoppable. The town would be mine. Have you become a communist yet? No, I've accidentally uh, become a moralist. Um, I didn't know there was an option, but that's what I'm going for. Fuck communism, I, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Yikes. What, what do you mean, yikes? Do you not like moral spigots? Are you a bad person? Unfollowed, yeah. Someone's a bad person. Someone doesn't have any fucking morals. Um, this, but what is it for? Decoration. Why am I asking such stupid ass questions? I'm a communist. Um, you can be a communist and a moralist at the same time. I think. Um... Can I have it? I know someone who really likes stuffed birds. Sure. I mean, you already <laughs> took it. I don't like it anyway. It looks angry. <laughs> you steal something and then you go, hey, can I have this? Uh. Bye. Bye. Oh, what a cutie patootie. Oh, it's giving me cuteness aggression. Um, Disco Superstar Hobo Cop Communist is the way to go. I'm, um, I'm, I'm also a Hobo Superstar, but somehow a moralist at the same time. I don't know. I'm a little confused. My character, not me. I know exactly what I'm doing. Um, I didn't know you could do so many at the same time. Do I have, um... I can do, I can do the thing. Wait, was this a mistake? Volumetry shit compressor. That's what I need, right? Hold on. Okay. I think this is the thing that helps me take down the body, yes? Cool, 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 cool. That's very cool. Take the stuffed animal to Garte. I will. Don't you worry about that. Items. Um. The bird. The dead body of a gr gr grouse. Grouse? Grouse? Stuffed with some unknown material. From a distance, it might just pass off as the real thing. The bird itself looks extremely ruffled and slightly grumpy. Oh my god. There's a chance that Garte slaps me, but I like it. The scruffy-haired little boy kicks a stone. He can't be more than five years old. Oh, another one of Lil- Oh yeah, Lillian's twin. The other one looks indistinguishable from him. Lillian's other twin. the stone with his tongue lolling out of his mouth. Uh, you must be Lillian's twins? Is Lil Lily your sister? Point out the house. You guys look identical. Um. This one doesn't say anything. Kicking the concrete with his worn out sneaker. Lily's our mom. Explains the other one. Tongue still lolling out of his mouth. I already said that. The stone kicker laughs suddenly. His head is too large for his shoulders. The other one laughs as well. Maybe there's some kind of reason why they're laughing. An interesting reason somehow tied to the case. What? I thought Inland was one of my few voices that wasn't stupid. What is this? Challenging success. Like, what? This is not a success. This is a failure. What kind of thought is this? What are you laughing the about? Boy stops laughing and looks at his toes. Oh, okay. So now he's shy. Now he's not talking. Just wobbling around like he's afraid of something. Is half leg gonna tell me to beat up this child? Is that what's happening? Oh, is little Lily your sister? Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. Children are stupid. I say that out loud. Inland is just weird dialogue. I 
I mean, I guess. I would dare say that all of my voices are just weird dialogue, except maybe, maybe empathy. He knows what's up. Um, you guys look identical. The kicking one becomes frantic all of a sudden, as if that's something to be scared of. The obvious fact that you just stated. Oh my god, I'm just, I'm just terrorizing some children. He looks just like me. The other one says, yeah, I, I said that. The boy doesn't answer. His brother throws another rock. Both of their hair is covered in some kind of dirt. You're bad with kids. Oh my god, Kim. <laughs> the lieutenant remarks with evident glee. Okay, I. how about you do better then? Um, yeah, and what are you, Kid Master General? Maybe I am. <gasps> now, how about some actual police work? We are not getting anything here. Oh, what a little... Ah, oh, oh, okay. You, I'll let you have this one. Whatever. Bottle! Kim's been really spicy. I like... I was gonna say today. I mean, like, in-game today. He's been having... I don't know. He's having a, a lot of moments. Timothy giving you some sass, gonna respect it. I, yeah. I don't hate it. It's better than when he's just like silent and gives me the side eye. I, I really, I'm not a big fan. But I think he likes me now, so now he sasses me. Oh, hey, I found the drunks. Wait, what is this? You stop. stop mid step and put your hand on the garish necktie. That bottle, Bratan! Just look at that bottle! Where? Bottle? What? In this drunk's hand, on the pipe there. Glowing blue, a mysterious, otherworldly blue, filled to the brim with holy mysteries. It's hard to know what exactly your vivid interior is speaking of here, but I'm guessing it's got a lot of alcohol in it. No! What is this? Inland, my necktie, and electrochemistry trying to get me to drink? Why are they ganging up on me? I really don't care about any bottle. I don't want to look at it. You yeah. should care. I'm getting a very special vibe from that bottle. Please go talk to him. I need to look at it closer. Can anyone confirm? Is a uh, horrifying necktie, uh, what's, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Jack Eye Septical or whatever? It sounds exactly like him. Right? It's not just me. Does anybody else hear it? <laughs> I don't really watch him, but I swear that's his voice. What the fuck? No, seriously, Google it. Tell me that I'm right. <laughs> Jack Septic Jack Septical. Yes. You know exactly who I'm thinking of. Lucy thinks all Irish sound the same. No. So please, like it, it, it's him, isn't it? It sounds exactly like him. Is it just supposed to be an Irish accent? Also, I didn't know he was Irish. This makes a lot of sense. I thought he was just some weird flavor of British. Don't call me Abigail. Rumbles, an unshaven man with a ruddy nose. He narrows his eyes at you as if in recognition, then turns his head away. Oh my god, am I a friend with these drunks? She also doesn't know what an Irish accent is. So, in my mind, an Irish accent to the English language is what a Mexican accent is to the Spanish language. I don't know if that makes sense, but it's like the they sound really sing a songy for no good reason accent. He might be. I don't actually watch him either. Mm, so you're just talking at your ass. That's what you're doing. Don't you call her? Yeah, don't call Abigail. <laughs> I am the law. Who's Abigail? I'm gonna guess um his wife. Uh huh. Abigail. Don't you fucking 
Oh, Abigail. Abigail. Abigail is his wife or girlfriend. Chances are she's gone. Calling her wouldn't make it any better or worse. Oh, wait. One of these people, one of these people might be um, the husband of the lady outside the bookstore, the one that we harassed into thinking that her husband's missing. Oh, I bet Never you anything. you see such a thing in your life. But this guy's a little too drunk. Who are you? What's your name? Don't call Abigail. Okay. Where am I? What is this place? He's not going to be able to answer the that, but... Hiccups, then mumbles something unintelligible. Why shouldn't I call Abigail? He snorts and beckons you to lean in closer. Lean in. Don't call Abigail. Don't call Abigail. He then waves his hand as if, as if shooting you away. Hey, I'm an important official investigation. I demand you answer my question. Tell me about your friends. Don't you fucking call her. Oh my god. Yeah, okay. Whatever. I'm done with him. Tell me. Uh, find working class has husband. Chances are the guy is drinking somewhere with his buddies. Find him and bring him home if possible. Is her name Abigail? Why don't we know this information? Hey, tequila! A 30-something man clad in a two-piece lick ra TM traction puts down his pilsner and extends his hand in greeting. Good to see you. How's business? How's the whole reality situation treating you? Uh, shake his hand. So what's happening? He picks up his beer. Wait, tequila? Yeah, tequila sunset. He takes a sip. How are the, um, high concept reality based adventures proceeding? Interesting. Good. These people know your true name. Looks like it has preceded you, Mr. Sunset. More on that later. What? Inland, stop being weird. I like this guy. You should too. He respects you by calling you your true name. Since when has Mr. Sunset been my true name? I thought it was like Morpheus, Ambidextrous, uh, Raphael, Corneus or whatever. Not too hot. I'm on a 50 year losing streak. Reality, it makes me aggressively sad. I don't know people tell me I'm a cop. I'm getting used to that. I have re-entered reality to conquer it, to bend it to my will. I am the law. Your in inland empire is much goofier than mine. I swear it didn't used to be this goofy. I don't know what happened in the two, three weeks that I haven't played this game. Also, I hate all of these options. If Kim wasn't here, sure, but he's here. I need to maintain a certain level of um. Normality. I'm in a 50 year losing streak. That's harsh. I'm like three or maybe four years into mine. Wait, no. Make it five. He looks at his uh, shit stained Lycra TM with a grim expression. Things aren't going super well for Idiot Doom Spiral either. Haven't found those keys yet. Haven't won that great piece of ass back. No word from my business buddies. He takes a sip from his beer. This guy's your buddy, buddy. You feel it immediately. You belong to an organization, a fraternity of drunks. <sighs> I should not be talking to these people. Um, what do you guys do around we here? We are saving the world. He looks at his comrades. Please! Please don't call! Don't call! Pegasus the man in the pipe. Okay, we're drinking. We're drinking alcohol. That's what we're doing. I tried to save the world once, a long time ago, with enterprise, creativity, and willpower. But that didn't work out. 
Oh my god, can you imagine if this is one of the game game devs? The one of the people that was doing that like uh, uh reality stuff with the with the radios. You guys know what I'm talking about. So now it's a pirate's life for me. What is a tequila sunset you keep it's saying? You. Your tequila sunset. How do you know this? We've met before. Don't you oh, remember? God. They really are my drinking buddies. No, uh -huh. I don't remember. Do you want to know how Tequila Sunset came to be? Tequila. Tequila Sunset. Something ominous there. For some reason, the name Tequila fills me with forebo for foreboding. Maybe I shouldn't learn what it means. You think you feel bad now? Wait till you've heard the oh, story. Oh, no. No, 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 no. No, no. You need the wisdom no 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 i don't even if i i don't even have any any medicine to heal my morale for whatever this is going to do to me i'm not doing Suit that yourself mr sunset no you too tequila sunset <laughs> I will, I, I've been really relaxed the entire time that I've been playing this game and then when I found the note from my wife and I thought I died, now I'm like sketched out, right? Because you don't know, you don't know if an interaction is gonna do four morale damage and kill you. You can't just be talking to anyone. The bushes are too thick and thorny to pass through. Okay, what about this third motherfucker? Do I have deals set up for you, buddy boy? He spreads his arms as if wanting to embrace you. What are you talking about? So what do you want? I've got smokes. They're cheap. Very cheap. I've got pills now. Great deal. You won't get a better deal on that piss. Spirits I can let go for 300 real. I also have speed. And by speed, I mean amphetamine. See? There it is, Bratushka! The spirit! Let's buy the spirit! 300 real is a lot, but this has to be done! It has to be Jack Acceptable, right? Like, come on. He definitely, you know, the, 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 the devs of this game, well, where are they from? Slovakia, something? They definitely somehow got one of the bigger YouTubers uh, to voice this this horrifying necktie right this makes sense it's just canon it's, it's canon end game. Ah, this is just another stupid drunk idea i'm having that i'm attributing to my necktie <laughs> uh, this is the mystery and the truth and i need to buy that spirit no i do not what if i don't want to listen to my necktie anymore what if i don't want to listen to my necktie anymore Snap out of it, Bratan. This is no time for melancholy introspection. It's time to buy that spirit. <sighs> no. Bratan, you don't understand. It's not just another drink. This is what our relationship has been building towards all these years. This is the climax, the mystery, the virginal sigh. You have to buy it from him. Get it off him. Kill him if you have to. Our ultimate fate depends on it. And the fate of many worlds. The next time is played by uh, Mickey Goodman. Oh, oh yeah, that's I believe that's uh, Jack Septicals government name. I knew it. The lieutenant looks at you, looking at the bottle of spirits, then at Rosemary, suspiciously. Oh, she knew it. Exactly. Um, Kim, save me, please. Um, quite the business venture you've set for, up for yourself here. Oh, the system's been good to old Rosemary here, and I'm milking her like a bitch goat in the backyard. Oh, okay. What do you mean? You see, friend, man makes his own luck, and I made mine real good. Got my hands on three bottles of liquor X squeeze. Sold two to the fellows around here and immediately invested the profit. Okay. Bought cigarettes, bought beer, even bought a bit of speed. And look at me now. I got everyone on my hook. He spreads his arms and smiles a crooked, toothless smile. Um, I'm already 
Looking for Kuno, I think. <laughs> Looks like you're on your own hook too. Impressive, uh, impressive entrepreneurship. Point to his via stand. I approve. You got a permit for this little shit show. Oh no, I shut him down. Can you imagine? Um. Oh shit, I don't even know what to say to this one. But thankfully, I don't have to figure it out because we have an ad coming up. <laughs> so I can sit here and think about it. Alrighty. I will be right back. I am back. Okay. Um, I'm just gonna go with number three. Impressive entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. cook them, huh? You wanna buy something? Let's keep yeah. it moving. Yeah. Why does the bottle of spirits cost three hundred real? I feel like that's a fair question. See, friend, it's real valuable. Worth every real, if you catch my drift. Got it from a bit of a business venture. Um, none. Let him speak. You know, it's funny, actually. <laughs> he bursts out laughing, then takes three gulps of his pilsner and stares at you intently. What is? What? What do you mean, what? What did you think was funny earlier? This guy, this guy. He says and shakes his index finger at you. Conversation might bring a discount, no? Um, where did you get the bottle of spirits from? Okay, can I just get the? No, no, no. Where? Oh, this is medicinal spirits. The good stuff. Got it from the doctor's office. The doctor's office. He ain't shitting you. Medicinal spirits are a blast, Bratan. The flaming truth of this joke of a world. I got one of those scientific ampoules a few months ago. Torpedo, they call it. It's supposed to keep a man from taking a drink. He spits a nasty yellow clot on the ground before you. Didn't stop me for shit, that's for sure. Five lemons with half a pack of butter and you're good to go. Butter? <laughs> uh, that's lovely. Um, uh, that sounds dangerous. In a week, the goddamn kidney started giving me all kinds of help. <laughs> Finally, the missus took me to a private doctor's office. Not a charity, the real thing. Those arseholes. Those arseholes charged me four real to remove the damn thing. But I came out on top after all. Assholes. <laughs> um, have they no shame taking money from a, from for a service they provide? But the idiots left me alone in there. Now... I used to teach high school biology. I know what doctors use to preserve dead fingies. He gets an excited glee in his eyes. Like three cans of this blue medicinal stuff from the back room. Threw the snakes out and voila. What's left is this beautiful blue stuff. 98.7% almost pure alcohol. 98.7% pure alcohol? Now, I don't know anything about alcohol, but doesn't that just mean it's rubbing alcohol? You can't drink that, can you? I mean... Two I already sold to these fine gentlemen here. But this last one is yours for three real, if you want it. No wonder they're so fucked up. Don't say it. For three real? I thought it was 300. Wait. It says here, I think it will prove useful, yes. Will it actually, or am I just a drunk? Am I gonna need this for something? Maybe you don't need to drink it. I... Hmm. No, 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 no. Because what if, what if I buy it and then, and then my character goes haywire and drinks it without giving me the option to stop? Or, oh my God, what if I buy it and then there's a roll to not drink it and then I fail that and then I'm just back to being an alcoholic? No, no, no. So what do you want then? His tone is aggressive. You're getting on his bad side now. Ah, oh, fuck. The alcohol boiling his blood causes the agitation. It burns. <sighs> I'm not gonna do it. 
Sir. In the civilised world, it's a custom to tip the shopkeep, friend. But come back anyway. Who waves you off? <gasps> ship compressor. Yay! Ew, that's Bizarre disgusting. scientific news from Revachol West today, where a police officer's shit has been observed at a pressure of around 495 gigadecimals. These metallic hydrogen levels of shit togetherness were thought to exist only at the center of collapsing stars, not law officials. It remains to be seen how long the shit's singularity lasts. Cool. All endurance white tricks unlocked learning cup for endurance runs to four. Cool. That's very nice. All right, we got to go take down the body now. Spirit is eternal. The Hori Empire necktie is getting ready for the end game. For the love of God, do not remove it till the magic happens. Buy the spirits from Rosemary. I definitely don't want to do this, right? If my goal is to not be a drunk. Till the magic. Yeah, I'm not. No, I will not let them sway me. Wow, you work hard. I do. Oh, yes, you hustle. You're a provider. It's tough out there, but you keep it real and provide. Okay, why? Whoa, why? What is he trying to get me to buy? Uh, yeah, I guess I do. Oh, yeah. yeah, like a horse, a workhorse for hard work. What hard work do I do exactly? Look at yourself. You're a human pedometer. <coughs> you must have walked 200,000 steps down cracked asphalt, mosaic, sand and linoleum after you reemerged. That is the sign of a hustler who never gives up. The world is harsh and people are evil. You didn't make it that way. And you won't let it break you. You ride. Yeah. Yeah, I ride. A little. A little? You make money. You got gills, baby. Got those black papers with the faces of the innocents on them. You bring in the Franco Negros and the Solas. It ain't easy, but you do it. Day in and day out. You didn't make the rules, but you won't lose. You're a cop and a sprinter and a money printer. You could say I took some money from the manana guy too. Oh my God. What is this? What, what are we, what is this? Oh, and then there's the pawning stuff off of to the suspicious Roy guy. I guess I've made some guilt, sure. Oh no, what, what I, if I only knew where this was going. Roy is not suspicious. He's just different. Let's go with number one. You didn't log that in as a donation either. You don't log any of that shit in. You're a straight rider. I guess I've made some gills. Okay. Sure, sure. And has it been easy? Is life easy? Have you not gone into cardiac arrest? Are you not about to have an anxiety attack or shoot yourself in the mouth? But you still hustle 24 seven, ride or die. Now, ask yourself, are you rich? Yes, I am quite rich in an abstract way. Get out of here. You're a pauper. You work harder than anyone. Almost rode yourself to the grave and you're still practically a hobo. Why is that? Because of that Garte guy riding my ass. Can you imagine? No, no. Uh, there's a market for corrupt cups out there, but the immigrant cups have price dumped it. What the fuck? Fucking taxes, man. I, I don't, I don't. This, uh, we're going down dangerous paths here. I don't know what this is. Um. I don't know why am I so poor? Because I'm an alcoholic. That's because why. Because of the taxes. Oh no! G man's got his jam-covered sticky fingers in your pocket, stealing from you every time you buy, sell, walk, talk, fart, 
so much as sneeze. Why are we suddenly anti-taxis? What's going on? What did I do? Really? Every time I sneeze? Every time you wipe your ass, they got their direct and their indirect modes of taxation. Sales tax, excise duty, extraction tax, alimony. One tax that doesn't even have a name. Plus there's the stuff people in other countries pay for. That makes them ask for more money from you. Here, total tax duties add up to 98% of all your money. No fucking way. I guess I'm free market fundamentalist now. No. Why? How did I trigger this? Are you sure? That seems like a pretty big number. What are you not sure about? They're milking your nipples till they bleed. Can't you see? Aren't you sick and tired of having bloody nipples? Ew! Stop! Why are we talking about bloody nipples? Ew! No! No! I'm out of here. What I'm not you? even gonna a read. Racist? Don't be a racist. What? Be a cool immigrant, ultra liberal, free market advocate. Ride or die. Keep it street. Why is he being like this? What, so if I don't subscribe to your tomfoolery, I'm a racist? Why is one of my internal voices a politician? Well, if I'm not being an ultra-liberal makes me a racist, then I guess I should be an ultra-liberal. I mean, checkmate, right? I lost. Here you go, hustler. Fight the righteous fight. Free the people. Keep it real. Keep it street. Keep foaming at the mouth furiously on the tax issue. Why does the tax issue have to do with any of this? I thought ultra liberals like taxes. Isn't that the whole point? Oh my god. Negative two empathy. Yeah, I'm not doing that. I'm a very empathetic person, as a matter of fact. Oh, that was crazy. That was insane. A drop in temperature, an easy flow there, an empty street before you, a thoroughfare unjammed with lorries. No more drivers smoking on hitch steps. Just silence. What did the smoke smell like? Chemically sweetened. Across the road, a forgotten bus stop. Corrosion has opened a hole in its roof. An elm tree watches over the building. Its branches are dripping with rain and snow. The road is smooth and motley. Craters filled with a black asphalt. The asphalt first laid is gray already. A row of tenements are under construction in the distance. Or the people who live across the road. A tub warm with water, white with soap. A man bathes while radio waves transmit the lottery numbers. 4, 18, 21, 4, 1. A modern washing machine rattles a drawer full of silverware. His boyfriend is on his way home. He brings tins of meat and vegetables with him. Their pockets are heavier with money, but only slightly. Okay, what about the bus stop? Number 312D. Young girls used to come here huddled up, hoping for more warmth than their thin coats give them. The bus took them to school. It has not run for eight years. There were not enough girls to sustain its cost. What about the road? Craters pocked the surface. Children played in them until heavy trucks full of black pitch rolled in. The landowners have filled the craters with money. It is a vital artery of the flow of trade. Cool. The wind moves the aerosol. A detective stands behind the boom barrier. A breeze moves a curl of his hair. God, we love Shiver. He's so weird. We're, we're going places. 
Rusty letters read Mesut. The rear tire of a motor carriage adorns this reed, so, so mine probably. Quick travel unlocked? Wow. Um, a school of fish huddle around the fence post and scatter into the dark. Before you, a drawbridge, it can only be lowered from the other side. Interesting. Oh, wow. Is it- wait, is this the church? You feel the shadow of a very large building fall on you. Dusty pews in the shadows. Many seem to be missing. Yeah, this is the church. They've got pew pews. An altar shrouded in dark or something like that. It's too dark to tell. Money! The, right, the sign reads St. Brune 1147. Heavy wooden doors, more than twice your height, stand shut in front of you. The rectangular sea-worn ornamentation appears in stark contrast to the padlock, carelessly drilled into the wood. I rattle the doors to see if they open. Nothing happens, only the sound of the padlock rattling against the door. I don't think that's going to work. Inspect the carpentry. The carving on the door is block-like and angular, like the church itself. Two large beams shoot downwards, sinking into the wood before they reach the threshold. On your hand over the beam. The surface is smooth from the wind, but moist to the touch. A closer look at the padlock. This cheap-looking padlock is sturdily built. It shackles together a hasp and a staple screwed into the wooden door. The lock is adorned with a yellow sticker. Look at the sticker. You see a yellow circle with two X's and a big curve below them that looks like a mouth. You're pretty sure you haven't seen it before, but what the symbol depicts is clear enough. A smiling dead guy. The curve makes it smile, and the X's make it dead. Have you seen this symbol before? He takes off his glasses and uses a blue handkerchief to thoroughly wipe them clean before inspecting the sticker. Then he looks up, pauses, and replies. No. What does it look like it to you? looks like a dead man smiling. Suggests junior delinquency. What? How do you get that from that? What is junior delinquency, Cindy? For Revachol's head aussi, the moral intern defines junior delinquents as minors between the ages of 10 and 16 who have committed an act in violation of the law. Cindy? These acts aren't called crimes as they would be for adults. Crimes committed by minors are called delinquent acts. This was part of your officer's exams. He puts the handkerchief in his coat pocket. Cindy? Come on, that's literally the definition of Cindy as a person. What is suggestive of junior delinquency here? I haven't seen that sticker before, and I'm not a youth. Um, respect the staple. I don't know, man, I think she's pretty cool. Mm, she has you under her spell. I haven't fallen for it, though. Closer inspection reveals that one of the screws is not a screw at all, but a nail. The work has been done recently, and is unprofessional, to say the least. Hi. Uh, I try to peel off the sticker without ripping it. There's nothing like Ooh. the sound of a sticker unpeeling. Now it's stuck to your thumb. Uh, put the sticker in your ledger after the last entry where it belongs. Put the sticker on your ledger, right on the cover. <laughs> no, no, no. Where it belongs. Right, today was a gold star day. If you really think we should get in there, we need to find some other way. Um, where do you think we should start? Can you hear the pulsing bass underneath the east wind? A sure sign of junior delinquency. Can you hear the pulsing bass underneath the east wind? Sure sign of junior delinquency. What does that mean? What is he trying to say? I'm so suspicious. A dead phone, a smash receiver, like somebody hung up too hard. Can we do spells? Apparently. Thump, thump, thump. Okay. 
Someone must have been must have worked. Hey, let me read that again. A Fuck. little payphone under a yellow plastic dome. You could use it to call someone, unless you're out of change. I don't know anybody's phone number. Come on, we know this. Plus, hum, the electricity flows through the wires with audible power. Someone has left an unidentifiable article of clothing on this railing. It smells really bad. Take a closer it's look. It's streaked with dried seagull shit and tangled with pieces of seaweed. A dangling arm suggests that there might be a jacket beneath the crust of filth. Um, tell me this is not mine. I already have my jacket, Please right? tell me you're not taking that with you. It might be a clue. A clue? You think our suspect is a seagull who's been defecating on unsuspecting jackets? It could have been multiple seagulls. <laughs> <laughs> Fucked! You should still take it. Filthy jacket? This filthy rag has been at the mercy of the elements for quite some time. It's streaked with seagull shed and abnormally stiff from god knows what natural processes. You can't even tell what brand it is. As you hold it in your hands, it makes an uncomfortable crunching sound. Man, how did this jacket get so disgusting? It's a sordid, filthy tail. Not for the weak. Are you sure you can stomach it? <gasps> I can stomach it. I can, as a matter of fact. Think about it. It occurs to you that you're not even holding the jacket itself, but rather the thick crust of jetsam and seagull shit that ensconces it. Okay, gross. Why? Why did you think about it? Look at your hands. They're covered in muck. Ew, ew, ew. Flick your hands. Maybe if I wipe my hands off my pants. No! No, 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 no. Flick! Flick. Now you're just flicking the Ew, no! Everywhere. This is a disaster. You'll never get the smell out. I'm so weak. Police officer, by the way. I, I just, I have no words. Make sure Ruth Bagrants have tried to make the boardwalk habitable. A coin operated waiting machine hasn't been used for a decade. Bagrants have recently painted the tarp red. Water drips from it. Cindy's been here. I knew it. Mega Binus prescription lenses. Well, that's nerdy. Everywhere I look, I see clues that Cindy is the villain. I will not let society sway me. Just because she's a woman and she's young doesn't mean that she's not evil. Careful there, these boardwalks look rotten and weak. The smell. It's awful and familiar. Hold on, that is awful. Cover your nose. What is it? Don't you recognize it? That idiot's pungency. That faintly cloying sweetness. Only death smells like that. Something cold wakes in the pit of your stomach. Fear. Heads up, Lieutenant. Something's not right here. The Lieutenant has already brought a handkerchief to his nose. Lucy's Law, if Cindy could have done something, she must have done it. <laughs> watch, watch, this is all gonna come, it's all gonna be revealed soon enough. Is this a dead body? Is that what's happening? There's some tear, an empty cigarette package, and a crumpled kebab wrapper in the trash bin. Oh, kebab. I'm so hungry. Examine the tear. Two empty bottles of Tallulah vodka and a can of black potent porter is all a tragedy the lieutenant looks in the can eyes watering from the he smell shakes his head with genuine sadness seven the cigarette package whoever tossed it here was a heavy smoker the brand name reads red astra seven the kebab you wrapper. see traces of mayonnaise and ketchup on it as well as a tomato wedge the wrapper reads 
Shish kebab, river show. Oh no, I'm so hungry. A man lies on the boardwalk. His lips <gasps> bent and neck turned at an unnatural Working angle. class corpse? Right next to him is an empty bottle of spirits. In his cramped hand, a chewing gum wrapper. Is this working class woman's husband? Half of his body has slipped between the cracked boardwalk, starting with the right leg. The fall has left him broken, contorted like a sad puppet. Hold on. Milton squats next to the corpse and examines his face. Two bulgy knives stare back at him, void of any sign of Divinity life. The is faintly pronounced. Whoever this is, he's been dead for two days. No longer. Wow. We need to investigate. He stands up and shivers as a gust of wind blows through his bomber jacket. Another dead body. This is your job. Steal yourself. Calm now. Carefully. Just another day. Just another dead body. Breathe. I have PTSD. Oh, study the man's clothes. He's wearing mud caked boots, beige trousers, and an old brown leather jacket with a bright blue lining. There are traces of kebab sauce on his chest. Search his pockets. You find some sunflower seeds and a rain soaked library card folded into two. His jacket feels sodden and heavy under your hand. Good. We should take a look at that library card after this is done. Study the man himself. The man has fallen through a crack in the boardwalk and hit his head against the metal bench. Coagulated blood covers his black hair. One of his feet is still dangling through the hole. You have to be quite inebriated to fall that bad. Well over a liter of pure ethanol. Three bottles of wine or one and a half of spirits. Examine his face. His expression is dull like the sea behind him. Drops of water shining on his moustache. His eyes, empty and wide, look frightening in their frozen gaze. Height, 170 to 175 centimeters. Curly hair, stout build, age approximately 50 to 60 years. I've never had a visual calculus do anything. This is the first time it's ever shown up. That's crazy. He was confused when he died. Confused and alone, most likely. Overcome with the awful surprise of it all. It's making me sad. He was just about to head home. The first step back home proved to be his last. Study the surroundings. There's some dried blood on the metal bench, right where the corpse's head rests. The floorboards are rotten and slippery wet around the hole. An empty bottle lies nearby. A chewing gum wrapper is clutched in his fist. Sam in the man's head. A dried chunk of blood covers the hair at the back of his head. An open wound. It's sticky and cold to your touch. Ew. I'm really gonna have to go wash my hands after this. This is where he came out of himself. Drop by drop when he was unconscious. It took three, maybe four minutes. I don't see any other major wounds, do you? Um, it's hard to say. Seems like the head wound was fatal. It's exactly fatal. the shape of the bench. Um, step on the floorboards. No, don't do that. What? Sam in the bottom. Seven five liter Tallulah vodka with its cap missing. There's hardly anything left inside. It's mid-market spirits with a slight touch of menthol. The man meant to enjoy himself, have a good time. Tear all around us. He looks at two other bottles near the coin-operated viewer, then at your yellow plastic bag. I'd prefer if you didn't collect them this time. It's not proper. Okay. True. It feels disrespectful. Examine the chewing gum wrapper. Robowski spearmint chewing gum. Green leaves on the cover. The man's mouth is half agape from the terror of the fall. Look in. The blackness of death. Stench. You think you see white chewing gum too? He ate the whole pack, right? It's to cover the smell of alcohol before going home. The worst thing is, I've seen it before. Almost the same scenario, even the chewing gum. It's always the same. In a ditch of a road below the 881, he thinks, a young father. Then he shakes his head to make the memory stop. All right, I'm not stepping on the floorboards. I'm not an idiot. The entire boardwalk creaks in the wind as you take a step back. Who is this man? Looks like one of the locals. He'd have to know this spot to come here. 
You don't just walk over here. You look south. The way you came. But that's just a lazy assumption. What do you think? We know who this is. It's the working class woman's missing husband dead on the boardwalk. The woman you met at the book stand? Why do you think it's her husband? The leather jacket points at the men's clothes. It matches her description perfectly. Cool. I'm glad he knows that because I don't. Um... Oh, wait, the library jacket? Hold on. Do we know that? Do we know? Um. Yeah, we have no info. The library card, he was supposed to return a book. I don't, I don't remember the conversation that I had with her. Just assume the first the one. Bright blue lining. Well, he's definitely someone's husband. Um. I mean, we know what happened here. What should we do with From him? From where I stand, I can see two options. We either take the case and follow the leads to identify the body on our own, or we report back to the station and leave this for our colleagues to handle. We found him, we should finish this, take the case. All right, we should first examine the library card you found. Then we can call the station from my kinema. Let them know we are taking the case. Cool. Coin supporter viewer has been out for out of order for years. Stop messing with the coin viewer and hold on to something. This win is so strong. Yeah, let's get out of here. It's dangerous. Hey, what is that? Moonshine probably smells like tasty fermentation. Mmm, yeah. Alright, let's examine um the library card. Library card found on the pocket of the dead man on the Martinez boardwalk. It's still slightly damp from to the touch. The cover bears the stamp of Jamrock Public, uh, Public Library. The library card is folded into two and still slightly wet to the touch. The front side reads, Central Jamrock Public Library card issued to Billy Mejong expires July Billy Mejong. So we know his name. Whoever owns this card is an avid reader. You find a list of books written in blue pencil. Radio thriller. Stand a little less between me and the sun. The last one in the list is The Glinton Curve by M. Theobald. A library stamp indicates that the book has been returned. Most of these titles seem to be in the sci fi genre. Some thrillers, too. I got the bags. If lost, please return the card to the library. Dial 005 02. Five five two one one, or visit us at Moreau Street, seventy eight, Jamrock. Business hours, nine hundred to eighteen hundred. So I know a phone number now. Good. We should give them a call from my kinema. See if we can learn anything about Billy Mejean. All right, put away. Awesome. We've got lots of stuff to do. Lots, lots, lots of stuff. Can we go anywhere else in here? No, I don't think so. Oh. And you know when you just casually find a dead body? Same. First covers these long dusty windows. You see a once bright new room towering above you. The signage has peeled off over the years, but you can still make out Feld Electrical R&D. And Mikael noticed the windows, especially with how there are no windows on the south side. This was to deal with. A blonde man stands next to his son, pointing out the weather-worn ruins. He sees you approaching and New smiles. Officers. Come to investigate the historic subtext of West Martinez? I'm Tran Heilostam. You must be Kim Kitsuragi, right? I was just telling my son about this building. Not a lot of people realize the historic significance here. Very rich in hypertext. Why does he know Kim by name? Nice to meet you. What? Hypertext? Yes, hypertext. Young Carp and the collection of cultural hyperlinks. He's just making up fancy <laughs> words. This doesn't mean anything. I agree. Wait, what was that about the windows before? 
You and Kim know it. Wait, no, oh, Windows yes. first. So, Mikael, they had to deal with monitor glare, especially in the summer. They still had vector monitors back then. That was 49 years ago. So they didn't have windows on the south wall. Okay, you and Kim know each other? No, I can't say that we've met before, but I've heard of Kim, of course. Mikael, say hi to the officers. The child stays hidden behind the hem of his father's coat, clutching to his worn themed coloring book. Mikael's a little tired today. We spent all night trying to run Orbis on his radio computer. Have you heard of it? It's a programming language used in Grad. Quite tricky, but he wanted to play this Grad made adventure program. We've been getting really into worms lately. But I assume you're not here for giant worms when there are so many real things to see. Just as I was telling Mikael before, this is where the coalition landed in 08. We could be standing on what is the most interesting landmark in Revachal West. He points to the building. Again. This man is your half brother. You feel it. But why? What? What is so fascinating about an empty old building? Uh -huh. But it's not just any empty old building. He raises his hands to his eyes to show himself from the freezing snow. All four of you turn to admire the mural before what you. What not a lot of people know is this used to be the R and D department of Felt Electrical. And Felt, which now sells ink cartridges mostly, was once a top dog in the turn of the century cybernetics boom. Interesting. Oh, What's R and D? Research and development, man. Look at the building looming over you. Wait, what's an R&D department? Apologies, it's an acronym for research and development. <laughs> they don't use it anymore. Hmm. You're probably more familiar with RTD, research and technological development. Look at the building looming over it you. It looks old and weathered, with seagulls picking apart its stone and metal carcass. Bushy undergrowth has taken hold of the collapsed rooftop. Some kind of bird has set up a nest on a broken windowsill. I don't think I've heard of this Feld Electrical. That's not surprising. Only a vestigial ink cartridge and ferrotape manufacturer remains. He adjusts his suit jacket. He started out as a midway electronics outfit in Königstein two centuries ago. After an aggressive move to Revachol, Feld became a global player in the emerging personal electronics market of the pre-revolutionary era. Interesting. Still, Tricentennial was beating them in business machines. But Feld had an ace up their sleeve. Or should I say, they were developed an ace up their sleeve. I'm mixing my metaphors here. What was that ace? It was here in Martinez, possibly in this very building, that they developed prototypes for a tape computer. Tape computer? Mm -hmm. An elegant folding mechanism of rollers and ferrotape ribbons, portable enough to be a take-it-home solution revolutionizing business machines, possibly even bring them to the average consumer. Is he talking about phones? Which is a feat of engineering even today's giants, Rehm, ICN, and Zam, haven't achieved yet. He grins at Marion the sentence he just produced. What happened? Indeed. What? The revolution! The boy wipes his nose on his sleeve. Unfortunately, their moonshot project never made it to the market. Feld's move to Revachol backfired. The revolutionary government liquefied their assets and expropriated those very advanced prototypes. Possibly from this very building, or one of the adjacent ruins. He pauses, pointing to the other building, then All continues. All this was built by Felt, even a boardwalk. While Pines built Martinez proper as a resort for their middle management, Felt built this side of town for R&D. You're saying that Felt Electrical built this boardwalk? Look under your feet. What happened to the engineers, the company people? What did the revolutionaries do with those advanced tape computers? Ooh, that's a good question. They used them for military communications, but also to write and send out press releases. The most notorious example being Le Decret de Mars. What is that? What's the Mars Decree? I mean the radio transmission sent out to news agencies and world governments by the newly created Commune of Revachol on the 7th of March in the year 02. And this guy is info dumping a little bit. It's a beautiful piece of text, actually. A singer songwriter I know, Charette, called it a love poem to River Shawl on her political concept album, Bon Besser dans so Lind. You should read it. Every local library in River Shawl stocks a copy of the decree. Hmm. Hey, Nanny, have a good day. Thanks for hanging out. I tried out. to get Mikhail to memorize it. Tried to. Someone was much too interested in worms to be paying any attention. Mm, I'm going to ask something course, else. What else? Um, who 
<laughs> you look like someone who has money. Do you have any money? No. <laughs> no, thanks to you for having me and little Mikael here to pick your brain. A very interesting conversation indeed. Hello again. All right. All right. That's weird. Money. Let's see. Do we have some points? Can I use them to open? Oh, yes, I can. Spend one skill point to unlock the next slot. Confirm. Awesome. Hmm. I'll have to think about what's the next thing that I'm going to internalize. I really don't want to internalize the uh, Messerhead bullshit. I'd much rather shoot him. Interesting. Locked. I mean, I'm, I'm like lost. Tiny cages carefully constructed. Oh, is it them? Here we go. Ah, uh, oh, it is them. Easy. No way out, little guys. Not out of this gym. There's a cylinder on the ground in which the man is arranging some netting. It looks like some kind of trap. He notices you. Who's there? Oh, the police. Hello, officers. Well, hello there. Is that the police? Why are the police here? Gary the Crypto Fascist. Interesting title. Don't worry, Gary. I'll handle it. You must be Morel the Su the Crypto Sulogist. What do I owe the pleasure? Lena sent me. She's been really worried about you and is waiting for you to get back. Hey, of course. Thank you for passing along the message. That damn water lock is broken, and we can't go all the way around the 881. Um, yeah, that was me. I broke the water lock with my motor carriage, but it's been fixed now. You can go back. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna. I'm not gonna tell him that. Oh, good. We should really be getting back. Gary could use a hot shower and a warm bed. Did he say we can go back now? Yes, Gary. We can go soon. If you see <laughs> Lena, tell her I won't be long. Yes, Gary. We can go soon. Sir, your wife is waiting for you. I just have to do one more round. See if the phasmid has taken the bait. Then we go in. He fastens a bit of an netting that has come loose in the wind. Tell me about this phasmid you're looking for. Tell me about those traps. He seems pretty eager for you to return. And I'm eager to return to her, I assure you. But I can't leave before we finish with these traps. And what a cum dumpster this guy. My wife understands that just as well as anyone. He looks south where Lena would Come be. Come on, Morel. We've been soaking out here for days. It's time to go back. And leave the traps? Absolutely not. I won't let Lena down. Come on, she wants us back. I'm soaked up to my nuts over here. We'll both catch reed crabs if we don't dry out soon. I didn't know the fastness was so important to Lena. Of course it's important to her. She's seen it. A verified sighting, on record. One of only 40 century, and it's really? hers. She sighted the fastman? She didn't tell me yes. that. Yes, that's... How we first came to know one another, in fact. But that's her story to tell, not mine. <laughs> Needless to say, you must ask her about the mysterious phasmid. Suffice to say, it's long been our dream to find proof of the Insulindian phasmid together. I can't abandon course now. Another coughed into his fist this time. Bro, he's like dying out here. Maybe you could go back to the whirling warm up and come back to check the traps later. No, no, no. The traps need to be monitored on a regular schedule. What would we do if the Fairsmith were to starve while we were sitting tea at the hostel? 
He's dead set on this. Okay. What if I checked on the traps for you? Well, see, here's the thing. If I don't do anything, there's a chance that this idiot dies out here from exposure. Right? That's kind of like, that's kind of what I'm getting from this. So maybe I'll check the traps for him so he doesn't fucking die. I didn't expect you to take such an interest in our work here, officer. It looks at you with obvious surprise. Cryptozoology, zoology. <laughs> oh my god. In detective work are very similar. Chaos is my method of this. And I am in Scion. I'm all in with the cryptid shit. I'm hooked. Uh, I don't like I don't like any of these. The first yes, one. Yes, indeed. Both require a great deal of research, attention to detail, and, above all, persistence. Where are these traps? Right here in front of us? I don't understand this question. There are four in total. One is to the south, on this little peninsula. By the boathouse is there. He points it's south. Near. It's very deep. Where is south? They keep they keep like saying east, south, north, and whatever. And I just say I don't I don't have the critical information. Another we set in Land's End, to the northeast. It's behind a small sand dune there, on your way to the old radio tower after the church. The third is set near the canal, where you crossed by a concrete slab. A big thicket of reeds going up the slope, and among them... He just threw the trap in front of you him. You should check at least one of those before returning to this one, since I just said it. This one's more of a technicality, but still, better safe and stupid than sorry. I am... Um, I no longer want to do this. That seems like a lot. Do we really have time for this extracurricular venture? Ooh. Oh, shit. I wish I could just be like, you right, Kim. Never mind. Um, the pursuit of knowledge, it's his own justification. What, aren't you having fun? Oh, he's never having fun. Is it? He doesn't look too convinced, but this small shrug indicates why not. If you think it's important, you have been right before. What do I do if there's a uh, phasmid in one of the traps? Bring it to me at once. Just make sure the trap is closed tight. What if I encounter the fastman in the wild? That's highly unlikely, officer. But in the event you do, I'll spray you with a pheromone mixture I developed. Oh, oh no. It's made of musk and research chemicals. Oh no. The pheromone should attract the insect to you, or at least prevent it from bolting at the sight of you. It's quite potent. Will last no. you about a week. No, no, th no thanks. Choice. As I said, the chances of you encountering the phasmid are next to zero. I just hope that wasn't a mistake. But you, you feel you should have it on you. Something bad will oh, happen. Fuck. Don't mess around. Take the pheromone. It will make you sick. Okay. Well, I was gonna see if electrochemistry wants me to do it, then I cannot. Even if Inland wants me to. Hmm. What do? God. All right, why not? He douses you with the odd smelling spray, uh, double helping as you present your other armpit, and then gives you a satisfied nod. This is the smell of dying reeds, Ugh. of longing crumbling into the water. I hope you're not buying this. He dispenses it without letting you touch the canister, so it would be precious like holy water. It is precious. A single dose cost me 50 real to develop. Not that I expect you to understand self-financing one's own research. He looks at the lieutenant with disdain and puts the spray bag in his pocket. I'm ready, let's right. go. Which means you two can pack up and go back to the whirling. Whatever he thinks about this detour, it's clear that these men are exhausted and in need of assistance. Hey, let's go. Finally, someone's talking sense. Thank you for your help. Gary and I will start breaking down camp. If you have any more questions, now's the time to ask. We'll be gone once you get to it. Um, nah, I don't want to talk to you anymore. 
The soggy locks smell like ignition fluid. They uh, still they won't light up. Hello, I'm Gary. Very generous of you to help us out, officer. You're welcome. Yellow man. I mean. Wow. What the hell? The lieutenant raises his eyebrows slightly and takes out his notebook. Yellow man. That sounds awfully familiar. Something to keep in mind for later. I'm just waiting for my friend Morel to finish up with his insect traps so we can return to civilization. Not a lover of the great outdoors. I like nature, just not this bloody coast. It's mostly drunks and degenerates that come here. Degenerates? I've been trained to identify the slightest hint of degeneracy by the preeminent authority on it. <laughs> Drunks and degenerates, that's my, cra uh, my crew. Sadly, I think I might be the drunk or, or a degenerate, maybe even both. Nobody's perfect. I'm sure you've been tempted to drink. Um, ew. Oh, I've been tempted. But someone has to stay strong for Revacall. Revacall? And this guy's funky. I don't like him. Serious question time this man is no innocent no one is you know anything about the man hanged behind the whirling and rags oh so that's what the rcm in martinez is about great great to hear someone's finally taking care of that so you do know something about it no no nothing he was some kind of mercenary but everyone here knows that i'm just glad to hear you're looking into it that's all. Is this your mug? Hold up the yellow man mug. My mug? W why would you think that? You said yellow man. That's not something many people go around saying. Really? I hear it all the time. All in jest, of course. No offense meant to anyone. Still seems suspicious. Did I mention the mug was found at the scene of the lynching? Oh! <gasps> I accuse him of something. Yeah. Let's lit on. Okay. Okay. <gasps> it worked. I threw the mug away in the trash container behind the hostel. I know I shouldn't have, and I am very sorry, officer. Bullshit. You're not going to find me, are you? Mm, I would, but I don't know how. How do I find someone, Kim? Nah, Gary, I just want information. Ooh. Thank you. You won't regret this. I won't use another man's property to dump my garbage ever again. I don't know what got into me, really. Work has been stressful lately. Damn Koiko's price dumping us out of competition. What did you do, Gary? <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. Just answering some questions. Helping out the law. Here Helping we go. out the law. Stop pumping that sweet info. Um, how did you get into the trash container? I know a guy who works with the trash collection ah. services. CS Municipal. He gave me a master key for the trash containers of Martinez. Why did this guy go through all of this trouble just to throw away a mug? Literally throw it in any other trash can? Why would you need to get into everyone's trash? So I can use the Whirling's trash compactor to store my own stuff. Garbage disposal is expensive as hell. The damn Himeans run it like a mob. So that's why. I'm sorry, okay? I thought I could cut costs. I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have disgraced myself. Disgraced? God, why is this so serious? Disgraced? No need for the histrionic, sir. It was, after all, just yeah, a Yeah, exactly. Container. Kim, always the voice of reason. He studies his reaction. Gary doesn't answer. Gary, did you put the clothes of a murder victim, the man who was hanged behind the whirling and rags, into the trash container? Officer, please. Let me explain. It's not like that. So he did. I was only cleaning up. I live right across the yard from where he was hanged, and I saw him stripped naked. All the clothes lying around in the yard, smelling. People are animals, you know? Yes, yes. What happened? Okay, then what happened? Then I came out to clean up the rags because no one else would. I put them into the Whirling's trash, along with a broken mug, admittedly. 
He changes his mind mid-sentence. Okay. <laughs> I was coming to throw the mug away, and, well, I threw the mug there and the clothes too. Right. It was just civic duty. <laughs> the lieutenant remarks strolling. Exactly. That's exactly what it was. Civic duty. Yeah, sure. You wouldn't know anything about the victim's missing armor, would you? Armor? No. I, I mean, yes. Of course. I know he was wearing armor, but I don't know anything about it. Let's move on for now. I hope I could help your investigation in my small way. <sighs> you were surprised to see my colleague, Lieutenant Kitsuragi. Was he? Not many sealites here or anywhere other than sail. I met no offense, truly. Do you remember how when we met Measure Head and I said the next races will be a really good one? <laughs> uh, yes. Well, this is that racist. Are you Gary? Are you a racist? Hey, man. All I he meant blushes? was there are not many sealites around here. I'm just stating a fact. Bro. Racist be wilding. Ugh. All right, we have another ad coming up. I'm going to do a quick bathroom break and I'll be right back. I am back. I um slurped half a bag of chips and uh, I'm ready to roll. All right. Um, all I meant was that there are no many, there are not many seal lights around here. I'm just stating a fact. Do you have a problem with seal lights? The lieutenant is native to Revishal. Oh, oh, yes, of course he is. I was just speaking about his connections. Let's change the subject, okay? Hmm. Composture, legendary 14. Why is he shifting around like that? Analyze Gary's composture. I've, we failed that. I'm sure it doesn't matter, right? Let's see. Was it composture? Ooh, let me level up real quick. Let's see now. 8%. Wow, that went up significantly. Okay. He's looking comfortable enough. Maybe it was just beads. Sounded like beads. But what kind of beads might a man like Gary be hiding beneath his clothes? Are those prayer beads? <laughs> I just, just <laughs> I don't pray, officer. Faith in non-existent helpers is a sign of weakness. Not for proper Rivacolian men such as ourselves. Proper Rivacolian men such as ourselves and not Kim, right? Okay. Um, fuck that guy. I'm, I'm done. Heavy military blockades are riddled with bullet holes crumbling. Okay. Like, I want to keep exploring, but I need to go back to, like, the main area. Cause my morale, like I'm gonna die. Like if something goes wrong, I'm dead. <gasps> Magnesium. Wow, the game heard me. That's crazy. Clothes, glasses. I have lots of glasses and yet I'm not using any of them. Oh, I know why I'm not using that one. Um Yeah, all the glasses are trash. Whatever. There's a trap in the reeds at your feet. Looks like the same one you saw Morel set before. Same mesh, same wiring. Look around. Behind you. The ruins of a residential building rise over the reeds, shielding them from the wind. The reeds rustle confidently. When this district was booming, looks the like reeds there's were bugs in there, aren't they? Nothing obscured the freshly painted facades. Nowhere for drunks and adventurous teenagers to hide. Now only the wind blows, 
Reach for the Lucas trap. Lucas are crawling around in the trap, confused but uneaten. You see no carnivorous reed phasmid gorging on them. Big surprise. Anyway, one down, three to go. <laughs> Damn, I was hoping he would be the first no, one. No, you weren't. Damn, he knows me so well. This crazy bastard. A scattering of bullet holes is spread across the cracked wall, reaching from one corner to the other. Oh. Why this many bullet holes? Because maybe there was like, I don't know, a war? Unable to piece together the oh big my picture God. just now. There's a hole in the hypothesis. I'm dumb. Fine. The okay. The scattering of bullet holes looks like one giant smiling mouth smiling its deadly smile. Look, Kim, even more bullet holes. Something's definitely gone down mm. here. Correct. The density of the bullet holes is unusual. Even in a general average bullet hole frequency in Martinez sense. Grim <laughs> affairs. Oh, that's a funny way to put Meaning that. This is a lot of bullet holes. Looks like fully automatic rifle fire. Something you don't see these days. Mm, say nothing, just now. The lieutenant also nods. It is quite a scene. The two of you standing next to the broken wall of an abandoned building. Nodding. Nodding along. Two officers of the law against the world. Nodding in unison. It is your source of power. The bond of camaraderie between you is palpable. The lieutenant is nodding so hard it looks like his head is about to snap off his neck. Stop nodding. The lieutenant matches your nodding pace. He's a true professional at this. He's a professional nodder. He's gonna go to the Olympics. The nodding's reaching critical mass. You can't take this much longer, Captain. <laughs> Keep nodding, goddammit. Stay in the course. A small bead of sweat runs down the side of the lieutenant's face as he maintains his nodding. <laughs> what are we doing right now? What's going on? It's too much. You can feel your vertebrae starting to crack, your muscles groaning. My head's gonna fall off. Just one more nod. As the lieutenant takes out her handkerchief and softly taps the sweat off his temple, a faint crack echoes through the coast. Abort, abort. Fuck, I took no. health damage? Shit, it's too late. Oh shit, fuck hell. Busted the neck, did you? Glad I stopped when I did. My neck was really starting to hurt. Don't worry, little man. Now we should get going. What was that? <laughs> hey, this guy, like... I take damage from nodding too much? It's because his five head is too big. His brain's too heavy for his shoulders to sustain. People paid money to park here? No one would ever pay now. Damn. Ruthless. No, there was like a shiver or something just a second ago. Oh, there it is. The boards crack dangerously as you run. Be careful here. I'm just gonna go keep going back and forth in the same spot until I die. Um, now they can just park on the beach, am I right? Exactly. Fuck capitalism. The door is not only barred shut, it is inaccessible. Balm peepo peepo. Interesting. Or crash on the beach, rather? Bro. Can't do me like that. All right, get me out of here. Money! Hmm. 
I missed money. Fudge. I don't. I don't feel like going back there. Whatever. Who needs money? Not me. Okay. Was that all? There's a bench that I can't sit on because Kim will get mad at me. Oh, well here, let's actually go back to the drunks real quick. Um, analyze Gear's composure to find out if he's hiding something more. Ah, too bad I I'm not good at that. Fuck. Is it? The camera keeps zooming in. It's really uh, obnoxious. The legend returns. You know the dance. Smokable smokes. Finally came to your senses, uh, buddy boy. Ain't nobody else gonna give you a price like that. <laughs> Had to let life squeeze you to get that, huh? Well, can I get it for that? Yes, yes. Life squeezing spirits. Let's just make it a deal already. Cool. So can I get it for them? Sure, friend. A bottle of high quality spirits coming right up. That'll be free real. Just All right, make there sure you go. to enjoy that one, friend. Bratan, I am so proud. Now, whatever you do, don't drink it. This deserves so much more than just regular oral consumption. What? That's don't real sketch. So on the money there. Up the bum it goes. I... Who said anything about putting it up there? No! We're gonna put it into a way more special place! So special! Just hang on to it! Keep it safe! Wait for my sign! Uh, I... Soon. The time will come soon. Have patience, brave one. Thanks, Inland. I'm getting a really dark vibe from this. This won't be pretty. What? Oh, now I'm worried. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm scared. Let me out of here, man. Comes with life in the north, a washboard scrubs filth from fabric. Yes, the skid marks from my car. Beautiful. A familiar apparatus lies among the reeds. Another one of Morel's traps, weighed down by stones to keep it in place. The reeds bend forlornly toward the sand. You see slabs of concrete north. In the east, the city center hums to you. The constant, distant song. Louder on this part of the coast. Nearer somehow. And there's that cold again. Always the cold. We the this trap. trap is also full of panicked locusts. No sign of any cryptozoological beast inside. Of course. Another empty trap. The lieutenant takes a note, more out of habit than duty. Let's keep going. The next one is the lucky one. How are you enjoying the cardio, lieutenant? I'm quite enjoying it myself. Always up for a good jug. Otherwise, would I still be on this case with you? Ha ha ha. That's funny. I do run around a lot. I had decades old concrete defenses. Children play on them now. <laughs> Money! I'm lost. <laughs> I'm just trying to get home. I've been here before. Okay, well, that's locked. Cool. Oh, there we go. We just cross here. Good day. Oh, hey, it's this guy. Can I sell anything? 
Hello again. How can I help you? Um, is Roy high? And if yes, then what is he on? No, I'm not doing that. Electrochemistry, you can't fucking trick me. We've got people to talk to. We have to talk to, um, Lena. We need to buy. Oh, we need to call, actually. Right? Is that Inside, library card? You see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone, a pull out toolbox, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. Pick up the radio again. This is precinct 57. How may I assist you? Um, please connect me to Jamrock Public Library. Oh, I need to report a dead body on the Martinez boardwalk. One moment. You can hear her shuffling through some papers. Can you describe the body? Age, sex, cause of death? Uh, I didn't end it. An unidentified middle-aged man, height 100. We yep. suspect he might have been inebriated when he fell. There were bottles all around him and traces of vomit on his shirt. Any signs of violence? No, seems like it was an accident. No field autopsy necessary. What about his belongings? Did you examine his clothes? He was wearing boots, trousers, and an old leather jacket with a bright blue lining. I found a library card in his pocket. Any information on the library card? It is from Central Gem Rock Public Library. It belongs to someone named uh, Billy Mijin. Mijong. Do you and Lieutenant Kitsuragi want to take the case, or should I assign it to someone else? We're taking it. I have assigned the case to Lieutenant Kim Kitsuragi. Please follow up on this library lead to identify the man. We'll send someone to take the body to the morgue. That's all for now. Thank you for reporting in. Is there anything else I can do for you? Connect me to the library, please. Hold on, officer. And I am so immersed right now. I've got Central Jamrock Public Library on the line, and I've already introduced you to the librarian. Connecting the call in two, one. Yes, this is Central Jamrock Public Library here. How can I help you, officer? He sounds worried, yet ready to assist. This is how <laughs> people get when the police call. I'm looking for any information that you can provide on Billy uh, Mijong, a reader. Billy, Billy Mijong, you said. Give me a moment, I'll have to check our database. He puts the receiver down. Very, very immersive. On Moreau Drive in Central Jamrock, in a darkened hall lit by orange desk lamps far away from the noise outside, a middle-aged man taps commands into an old radio computer. A printout falls on the desk. Behind him, a lonely reader scours some dusty bookshelves looking for a paperback yes hello are you still there i found billy majan's home address is that all right no phone number unfortunately ah uh, yes home address is fine sir. rue de saint gislaine 33b apartment number 20. it's in martinez i believe cape side apartments it says that's all that's where the smoker on the balcony lives <gasps> isn't it um do you have any other information on billy it it says here that they returned their last book just a few days ago, but I wasn't at work that day. Uh, do you know someone who was? Marie? Marie? Do you remember a reader named Billy Majon? They returned a Tibalt book the other day. You hear someone answer from yes, afar. Yes, it, it was my colleague Marie. Uh, she said that it was Billy's husband who returned the book. He also what? asked for this new sci-fi release, Lowe's Radio City 87, <gasps> but we don't have it yet. It's Billy the name of the wife? So Billy Majon is a woman, not a man? How did your colleague know that it was her husband? Marie knows Billy. She's been working here longer than me. Sometimes her husband returns some books for her. Mm. And then goes for a little drink later, on the lookout. Do you know the husband's name? Sorry, no. Marie only knows him by sight. Can Marie describe to me what the husband looks Marie. like? She said it was an older man, and that she's pretty sure he'd had a drink or two the last time she saw him. It was her uh, One second. Boy, just give her the phone, man. Sorry, Marie wasn't really paying any attention to that. All right, thank you. That's all. I have no other questions. Happy we could help. Goodbye, officer. Anything else you need from me? Um, no, I'm, I'm good for now. Over and out. In the cabin, you see a. All right, let's go. T let's go find her, and talk to her. Hopefully, she's just by the bookstore. 
Oh, fuck. Of course. Oh, wait, the apartments are this way. And that's so sad. Like, she was just uh, living her best life, reading some books, and I came up to her and I was like, Hey, aren't you worried about your husband? <laughs> Very rude of me. Okay, let's see. What apartment was it? Apartment number 20. Do they, do they have numbers or... Huh. Don't tell me it's that spooky one. Wait, I thought that's maybe where uh, Kuno lives, right? That's why I was spooked of it. Yeah, I can't even knock on it. Okay, maybe she lives upstairs. How about... is going to be so hard don't knock just leave you don't need this you don't need to sad it up hold on kim we should discuss this before we move on what should we expect no fuck it Hello? just go for it who is it a voice calls out from the other side of the door um look at the lieutenant first is this billy's home this is the police please open the, the door a moment please give us a moment us there's fear in her voice. Come in. The door is open. Ah, uh, hi, ma'am. How are you? It's you from the book stand. For a moment, she seems paralyzed, just looking at you and the lieutenant. Then she snaps out I of it. I don't think I introduced myself properly. I'm Billy. Would you like something to drink? Looks around the kitchen. Tea, lemonade. We're out of coffee. The lieutenant has taken off his foggy glasses and is busy cleaning them in his handkerchief for now. You're on your own here. He must feel vulnerable without his glasses. Is this why he's letting you take the lead? Um... Thanks, but I'm alright. Is this about Victor, my husband? Is he in some kind of trouble again? I can come pick him up in the station if that's what. She stops, her eyes trying to read the answers from your no. face. This is something much worse. Is he in the hospital? How oh bad is it? Definitely no small talk. This isn't the time or place. Okay. Um, empathy impossible 17. Tell her about the dead body. Wow, 97%. Why do I get a plus four for Kim being here? Kim's always here. Hm. You've done this before. Just keep your focus. Uh, do I just say he's dead like that, ma'am? I'm very sorry to say, but your husband, Victor, was found dead on the Martinez boardwalk. What did you say? A great and terrible spike. The blood freezes in her veins. Your husband, Victor, is dead. I'm very sorry for your loss, oh. ma'am. She touches her neck, eyes pale with pearls in seawater. Oh. Like pearls in seawater. He was just... She looks at the kitchen table where two cigarette butts are still in the ashtray. But he was just here. Alive. We understand this comes as a huge shock. I want you to know that me and my partner are here for you if you have any questions. Take your time, ma'am. What happened to him? She turns to you. Her neck and cheeks are covered with red uh, blotches. Her double chin is shaken. It's still early to say, but at first glance, it seems like he slipped and hit his head. There was an accident and he fell through a hole in the boardwalk and hit his head. Yeah. Was he drunk? Um... Uh, for, for sure, yes, or... Yeah, probably. This is what Kim would say. I see. And you just found him there, lying in the cold. How long had he been there? If you say two days, maybe. 
it will be etched in her mind forever. Um, it couldn't have been that long. Two days, maybe. It's hard to say at this point. It couldn't have been long. She blinks, eyes welling up with tears as her hand starts searching for something from the pockets of her dress. She's not wearing a dress, is she? Plot hole. The handkerchief. Here, take this. Give her the lieutenant's handkerchief. No words, just give her the lieutenant's handkerchief. Um... No words. I'm cool like that. A small, terrified smile quivers on her face as she takes the handkerchief and wipes away the tears. She looks disoriented. I'm sad. Is there anyone we could call for you? A friend, a family member, someone who could be here for you? No, no. I just need to tell my girls. The air gets sucked out of her lungs suddenly. It burns like acid. God. Should I call them? Should I tell them to come home? No. A day. Um, yes, they should know. Do you want us to call them and ask them here? No, take a day to recover. You'll be better prepared when they come home tomorrow. Good. That's probably the right thing. Thanks, Thank Empathy. You. He's carrying this conversation. He nods, but with a wretched Just expression. Just tell me, what do I need to do next? Where is he? Can I see him? We've taken him to the city morgue. The local coroner will be contacting you shortly to arrange the funeral. Here's his number in case you want to contact him earlier. He hands her a <laughs> leaflet with the morgue's contact information. Empathy was made for this, literally. Is there anything else that the RCM could do for you? No, I'll call you if something comes up. I'm still... She rubs her face, runs her fingers over her cheeks that have become Thank numb. You. Thank you for telling me. I'll call if... She runs out of breath. These are her last reserves of strength. Her muscles will give in soon. Already, she starts to shake. Again, I'm very sorry, ma'am. should ma step outside and talk. All right, so the library card by her, leave the room. Yay, we solved the mystery. Oh, he wants to talk to me. That's lovely. You did well. <gasps> Lieutenant says as soon as you've left the apartment, the balcony feels cool and quiet with a stunning view of the district. Um. Nod. What now? I'll call the station when we are finished with the day and let them know the name of the deceased. Um. Uh, that's it? That's it. We should get back to our case now that our duty here is done. What about Billy and her kids? They'll manage. All right. Let's go. Case closed. Hey. Easy peasy. Man. Shit's sad. Oh, I can take down the body now. Bet. I bet. Let's go. Oh, that's so exciting. Oh, I forgot. Um, there was like two, two people at the hotel the morning of this day. It's Faithful Wednesday and it, they were like being weird. The guy was being weird. I think they're like police officers or something. All right. It's now or never. There he still is. Looking <sighs> right through you. With Shit's his white been compressed. Eyes. Let's do it. Below is, as you breathe in, the odor comes over you. It's a spell of the mind telling you to run and your stomach to ring itself empty. With your hands at your sides and your eyes squinting, you stand in it. Step closer. The man before you is naked, but for a pair of underpants and enameled boots. His skin is greenish marbled with decaying veins and blotched by lividity. A fading web of tattoos covers his chest and shoulders. The cargo belt used to fasten him to the branch above appears industrial in strength. Um, inspect the, the boots. The material appears to be ceramic. Its clean white stands in stark contrast to the decaying flesh above the knee. The man wore thick polymer socks, probably for padding. A fine array of interlocking plates covers them. Delicate 
and fragile. They feel alien to the world around you. Out of place somehow. What kind of boots are these? They are armor, no boots. Technically speaking, these are sabatons. Okay, then what kind of armor Ceramic is this? Ceramic plate. Zirconium dioxide, most likely. This is where the make would be. Where? Under the hill. Fair weather. Fair weather model T500VE. I'm guessing that's vitreous enamel. This is advanced stuff. Um, where's the rest of it? Scavenged by the locals? Piece by piece. He's been out here for seven days. It would be odd if they didn't. We should keep a lookout for these pieces. The armor could yield information. This is one thing he might actually know. Huh? If you wear those pieces, it will help me protect your mortal coil. <laughs> okay. Um... Understood. The sabatons dangle off the man's decaying form. Um, Ageless and Knock on the synthetic. boot. A small bell-like sound fills the air, like tapping on the side of a porcelain cup. Suddenly, your biceps coil up. Your elbow is sharp and cocked for a punch. Why? Why break it? It's anything but. This material is a kinetic redistribution. Uh -huh. The game it was trying to trick me into hurting myself. From like plate always. To plate, dissipating it entirely. See? Faint organic lights cover the plates where they separate into smaller ones. These plates then divide into smaller plates until there are hundreds of them altogether. Like the scales of some ancient white monster, cracked and pearly. Um. How could this man afford such expensive hardware? I mean, his he job, right? Cocaine. It was probably given to like him. Joyce told us, this is military equipment mm -hmm, mm -hmm. provided by a wealthy security contractor with state ties, way above what we have. Um, pull the boot this off. This feels dangerous. Are you sure? Um, mm, I. Mm. Let's not do that. The sabatons so. dangle off the man's decaying form, ageless and synthetic. The material looks out of place it here. It's expensive. And the lieutenant draws a line in the condensation on the ceramic with his index We've finger. We've requested similar material for our tactical units for years oh, now. he's jelly the spaghetti. deemed it too costly. In that time, we've lost six men to semi-automatics. How much are we talking about? For a full set, about four years of wages. Wow. That's a lot, I take it. As a it. wage, it's regrettably small. But for a piece of hardware, yes, that's a lot. Back off and the look at the corpse. slowly twists on the cargo belt. His torso covered in tattoos and extremities blotched pink and blue. All right, let's take a look the at the belt. The knot is pulled tight by the weight of the corpse below. Yellow, hard-edged polyester cuts into his neck. Above, a sliding buckle ties the belt to the branch. What kind of rope is this? Industrial strength. The can use for tying cargo to lorries. Aha! Uh -huh. That's a clue. Like in a circus. When oh, the circus leaves town and they tie a black spotted giraffe to the wall of a carry pen. What? And uh, I can't come up with anything. <laughs> like in a harbor. Yes. It looks yeah, like let's they do that. Whatever was on hand, paying no attention to not incriminating themselves. Where's I mean dock workers from the harbor did it? Yes. The debrief we got from the Wild Pines representative appears to be solid, too. The lynching is what this looks like. Um, they sure wanted him to stay there. The polyester seems strong. It's not merely polyester. It's still reinforced. See these lines? This is where the wires run. I see rabbits for more than 20 strands. Holy shit! This makes getting him down much more problematic than I had assumed. <clears throat> How did they even get him up there? The is one of those things that's easier to use one way around. He points to the bucket behind the belt to the branch above. I think they lassoed the branch. Buckle, not bucket. Then pulled on the belt. Buckle closes. It's what I would do. Seems easier than climbing up there. Okay, back off and take a look at the corpse. from the cargo um, belt. Limbs took him in the eye. I don't want to do that. In tattoos. An Big intricate tattoos. web of blue lines stretches across the torso, from the right shoulder to the solar plexus. Each time they intersect, 
a small white star is formed in their crossing. Hundreds of fading asterisks riddle his skin. Their concentration is highest around his heart. His corpse is marked by stars. <laughs> Will mine be marked by? Well, I'm not gonna like this answer, am I? Alcohol. Yep. And heartbreak. Checks out. Your fist clenches suddenly. You will be riddled with disco. The K is creeping on the tattoo. Already, most of the canvas that's holding it has darkened. Now, it disintegrates slowly, letting out a stink. Um, is this a map of the night sky? Is this microelectronic system? Is this a national pattern? Hmm. Map of the night sky. A map of the stars. I do see some similarity to astronomical charts. Great century Messinian, maybe. But this seems more particular. Customized somehow. Mm. We're missing something here. Suddenly, a sudden ring fills the air as Lieutenant pulls down the zipper of his orange jacket. He takes a thin piece of milled aluminium from his coat pocket and pulls it open. Sounds like a sword being unsheathed. A small lens appears. Some sort of camera. Let the lieutenant work. Shit, Let him cook. Yo? What the fuck is that? An instant color camera. Oh, <gasps> gasp. He produces two metal capped implants and clicks them into place on the side of the apparatus. A thin slot shines there. <laughs> I'm guessing cameras are not too common here. This is the first time he openly acknowledges the kid's existence. Wow. I have only two ampoules, so nobody move. I don't want to waste one. He points the camera at the corpse, peering into it. The lens needs adjusting then. A, sound, a shrill flash, followed by the breaking of a small ampoule of glass. You see streams of color pour onto the thick, glossy piece of paper rolling out. That's a cool piece of art. In case we need it. Lieutenant says and shakes the paper letting it dry in the cold wind on it a color perfect copy of the dead man's tattooed chest um cool machine also shake it sh sh shake it yes it is pretty cool isn't it what do we need this photo it for contains insight to the victim's person this was a man of physical violence the story he wanted his body to tell was important to him it is his letter to us now, if you could find someone to decipher it. Mm, can I have it? I should look at it later without the corpse smell. Sure. Just don't lose it. He hands you the piece of rolled up photo paper. It's no larger than a pack of cigarettes. I cannot believe that he trusts me with this. The glossy eyed corpse looks by. His mouth mute okay. and his skin um, as colorful. How do we get Are him you down? sure we finish the preliminary examination of the cadaver? We might okay. miss some of these things. The cadaver slowly <laughs> twists on the cargo his eyes are milky white and blind to the world protruding comically from their sockets there is no one home just subaquatic terrors there dark brown hair grows on his head his face is ready to explode from the organic processes inside the death's head grin has passed what remains is an unrecognizable mess Okay, this is like, these descriptions are very graphic. Underneath the curdled meat, there is an expression. Not carried on his features, but below, inside. An expression of pleasure. This man was experiencing joy at the moment of his death. What? Tell me, who are you, dead man? Talked in your dreams. He was experiencing joy at the moment of his death. I'm Interesting. Gone. Where have you gone? Into the wild pile yonder. Where is that? In the past. Way out in the west. I can see you're gone, but who are I'm you? I'm a joke. Look at me. <laughs> um... Who you are now, but what were you when you were alive? A killer. A motherfucker. And a killer. Takes one to know one. I have another question for you. Go ahead, Kobo. Um... 
Why were you feeling pleasure when you Maybe died? I was getting my rocks off. First, do you have to speak like that? What dialect is that anyway? It's a mishmash, Copabolo. You think I'm Messinian, don't you? For you, this is how people from Messina speak like. Um, are you from Messina? No. My hair is too light a shade of brown. My eyebrows too. Trust your inner racist. I always trust my inner racist. No! What are you, racist now too? You think I am. You think I was a racist because this lump looks military and has tattoos. That's called profiling. So, were you feeling sexually a sexual arousal when they were hanging you? Do I look like an erotic auto asphyxiation type to you? Yes. Captain Copadromo. I fear we are drifting away. Fixating on sexuality again. Let's go with a simpler question. What is happening? What do you mean? I'm talking to you. It's the power of your... Black, frothy liquid starts bubbling on his lips. Imagination. Yeah, man! Don't be crazy! Inanimate objects and dead people can't really talk to you. Your wild imagination is doing this. Ask some more of those questions you love so much. Now it's not the time, Nectar. He loves those. Um, why do I love questions so much? you're a copper Look at all of them go. Do you want more questions? No, I'm good. Your lost copo dopo would have been so primo. All right, that, I'm good. Come back later, copo. Amuse yourself with my <laughs> frank manners and my memento mori features. It's going to take a step back. As you narrow your eyes, the monster before you blurs into a violent mess of green and pink. Observe. Only the lower extremities are pink with a dash of blue. His fatted hands, thighs, and his neck, just above the noose. The rest of the corpse appears dark green. In the cold spring air. Okay, I'm squinting, Kim. Why am I doing it? <laughs> Stop and relax your the eyes. The slowly twists on the cargo belt. Okay. His torso covered in tattoos. Sam is done. Let's do it. The steel reinforced belt presents a unique challenge. I brought chain cutters, but I don't see a good angle of approach to the belt. The cadaver is a good 1.2 meters up. Neither one of us can reach the belt without assistance. And even if we do, there's the question of cutting it. There's no question. There's only cutting. How hard can it be? Not that hard, I'm sure. Can someone else do it? I can cut the bell easily and I already have the chain cutters. We could saw the branch. Seems like a lot of hassle. Let's not do it. Maybe we could shoot him down. That's wacky. Maybe we can ask for help from the harbor. I'm out of ideas. Let's... No, 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 no. We, I, we got I this. I don't doubt your physical prowess, officer. But that's aircraft strength material. And we do not have a secure platform to perform the procedure on. The risk of acrobatic failure is one we cannot take. We must not become comedy for the locals. <sighs> okay. The fuck have you got against comedy pigs? Shut the fuck up, Kuna. Um, We could saw the branch? Climb up there and saw the branch? Yes, either one of us could do it. We could use the kid's ladder on the side of the tree. I don't trust that ladder. The assailants didn't use it. It's rotten and less sturdy than it looks. And I don't see another good way up there. Okay. Honestly, I prefer a non-acrobatic solution to this. Okay. There has to be a Fine. less risky way. With less falling down of trees. Let's shoot him down. Yeah! Bang bang time, pig! Shoot his head off! N no. How? Um, I don't know. Just, you know, shoot up there, maybe? Point towards the branch? Just shoot the bell, the bullet will break it. it. absolutely will not, officer. That's not how physics work. It will maybe cut one thread loop. Okay, so we shoot multiple times, Kim. Yeah, now we're talking. Entertain the Kuno with some shit. Don't miss! The pigs will miss Kuno! The lieutenant is undecided. 
On one hand, he wants to shoot some gun. On the other, it's an awfully stupid idea. <laughs> Take the shot, Lieutenant. What's the worst that could happen? Oh my god. I bring him down to my level of depravity and humiliation. I make him my equal, and then we get married. I'll blow his head off. <gasps> take it! Take the shot! Yeah, take the shot. Kuno wants some of that shit. Your love story is unparalleled. I know. Silence. With his elbow sharp. The He's doing it! Oh my god, we peer pressured him? Successfully? And produces a lightweight firearm. Oh my god. A paper cartridge in the barrel, separates the scouring stick, and gives the cartridge five tucks. He then steps back and assumes the fellow Stess position, taking aim. The corner of his eye twitches. His finger is on the trigger. Yes, he does it, partner. Wait, no, say nothing. Say nothing. The kid's voice is drowned in a shrill blast that echoes off the walls of the surrounding tenements. A cloud of smoke slowly parts in the air as the lieutenant steps back and says to himself, God damn it. Oh, fuck. Kim. Oh, my God. That was so many types of wrong. Who taught Four Eyes to shoot? Whip up a grueling training regimen for him right now. Beat the man into him. Go, go, go. He feels bad about it. About his eyes, mostly. Just having bad eyesight. Probably from a young age. Whatever you do, do not console him. Got it. Fucking idiot! Mooka by asshole! Kuno could have hit it easy, but then Kuno is not fucking handicapped, is he? Oh my god. Um, try again. I, uh, um, what now? I have to say, it's beginning to look unlikely we can get him down without assistance. Take his gun and show him how to use it. Can I have the gun? I should try. It's bad as it is. Us shooting firearms like punks. He pauses, then shrugs and proceeds to load the pistolet. Why? Why is he agreeing to any of this? I'm not stopping you. Just don't lose it. The piece shines in his outstretched hand. <laughs> I only have one gun. This is the sorriest pair of pigs Kuno's ever seen. Take the gun. <laughs> you fucking banani poika. Take it and shoot yourself in the mouth. Can I shoot her? Maybe. And can she shut the fuck up? Oh, feel the way first. A cold piece of bakelite and gunmetal is surprisingly light. Your fingers fit right through the guard, instinctively resting on the trigger. I mean, I'm a guard cop, right? This should be easy. What the fuck are you waiting for, Kuno? Tell him to shoot himself in the mouth. Kuno is silent. Aggression gathers in the air. The trigger feels delicate and ready to break under your finger. Point the gun at the belt. The buckle comes into focus in your sights. You stand with your feet planted firmly in the ground and your left hand supporting your gun arm. Why don't you just shoot yourself in your f mouth? At least you won't miss. This isn't mere boundary pushing. There is a true suicidal rage in the kid as she's provoking you. Say shut up. Oh shit. This is not good. Um, point the gun at Kuno. Is? <laughs> no, she would probably like that, right? Oh my god! If I tell her to shut up, she's not gonna shut up. That's asked for it. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, there's no way that Kim's okay with me pointing a gun at a child. <sighs> Close your left eye first. The field of view narrows. The oh branch God. slowly moves, becoming entirely two-dimensional. The metal buckle glimmers, catching the noon light as the corpse slowly rotates. 
Fucky's crying. You gonna cry now, fucking faggoty? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a good person. Oh, what? You're gonna fuck me? You wanna fuck me, pig? Is that what this is about? What is wrong with this kid? How old is she? What's going on? Can we, like, can we take, can, can we, can we pause the game and talk about these two kids? What, what is this? Why are they so unhinged? I wanna point the gun at her, but she's psychotic. Okay, you, this is not. This is not gonna work. This is not gonna work. This is a red check. It cannot be retried. All right. <gasps> the buckle explodes into tiny pieces, coming loose with a whir. With your hand numb from the recoil. You look at the body slump down. For a moment, the man appears to kneel in front of you. I can't believe it! Looking straight at you, helpless, trapped within itself. Who killed you? Communism. <laughs> <laughs> it takes a millisecond for the association to flash within your cortex. You have no idea where it's coming from, only that it's right. Then the rigor in his muscles gives up and he smashes sideways into the spring mud, letting out a horrid stench. I, this is my, my biggest achievement, <laughs> like in life. What? I had a 17% chance. 17 is my lucky number. I should have known that it was going to work. Wow. <laughs> You've been policed. Hey! Hey! Oh my god! <laughs> the lieutenant takes a little hop to perform the customary salutation. Your palm hurts from the slap. It's precise and down to the point. He's so cute. I love him. Let's get married. I knew these guys were f Okay. Um, and no, let's, let's just ignore them. We will this perform is fine. a field autopsy and determine the cause of death. But before... <gasps> Excuse me. He needs to turn away from the it corpse. Looks like I feel like taking a break from the stench. I'm sorry to interrupt the jubilations here. Just a little breather before we do the autopsy. Wait, field autopsy? Ah! All right. In the meantime, we should try to interview Evrard Claire, the leader of the union. Harbor property was clearly used in the hanging. The harbor just east of here. Getting in might prove a challenge, though. Yeah, it's been a challenge this whole time. I interview Joyce, the Wild Pines representative. But we've already done that, so good for us. One down, one to go. This is a famous list of initial interviews. Yes. And those were the interviewees. Let's go. Why? But okay. Wow. Okay. That was incredible. Okay. How? I have. I have. I have a. I have a point. Right. What is this? Empathy towards Kim Kitsuragi. All right, well, I made the choice. Now I can't stop. Okay. Might have gone ahead of myself. I should have probably read the other ones before I started assimilating that. Oh. Okay. So... If I keep leveling up physical instrument, will I eventually be able to punch Meshurhen? That's... Because it hasn't worked so far. And for some reason, Kim won't let me point a gun at him. Couldn't tell you why. We need physical instrument, right? Anyway, because we need to like jump from from 
from that rooftop to like the lower ledge and that's physical instrument i think it's not hand-eye coordination is it ready aim fire i don't even need that i already know how to aim and fire um yep let's go punch that guy quick Oh my god, it's so exciting. Why am I so zoomed in? Stop. Yep. All right. Uh, all right, um, let's do our very last ad break of the day before we measure up to uh, the measure head and um i'll be right back all right <sighs> back here we are back to measure head hey bitch promising, raise pupil, knock him out yes Just nerd like that, instinct took over a solid strike straight into his throat <clears> into the cartilage you could swear you felt the soft palate break oh oh that's disgusting the man is reeling gasping for air time stands still around you in the distance the sounds of the harbor are falling silent i'm sorry did a ham sandwich knock you out <laughs> Is a small gurgling sound as a trickle of blood appears on the man's lip. Oh, just an uncured, uncured ham knocked you He's out, yeah? Open. Rip into him, right hook, escalate it, get intimate with him, bring the hurt closer. I. Okay, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. There's no check on this. Am I actually gonna successfully perform a 360 flying spin kick? Wait, wait, what should I do? Don't wait. You've only got a millisecond. Oh shit. He's coming too. Time is breaking loose oh my God. from the stupor. His left hand curls up into a fist. That's I need to finish him. I need to finish him. Out. He's expecting the hook. <gasps> Spin kick! Oh my god! The man lands with a dull thump, like a broken down puppet of muscles and sinew. For a moment, he still tries to keep his head up, dazed eyes looking at you with unimaginable surprise. <laughs> to your left is the button. I roundhouse kick him in the head? I didn't know I had that power. Oh my god. This is insane. This is crazy. Disco Inferno? Wait, wait, hold on. Hold on, what button? This guy's looking at you with unimaginable suppress to your left is the button. What's the button? Welcome to Revishal. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't want to do this. Press the button. No, no, I like I like this one. Welcome to Revishal. As you slam your fist on the button, the man collapses entirely, his head rolling to the side. Ah! Victory! Looks like you're the new measure head <gasps> now. Well, hey, babe. Yeah. Yes, the I am. Is surprisingly calm. Oh. No one is the new measure head. Oh, okay, Let's never mind. Before he gets up. Newton <laughs> makes haste towards the door. <laughs> Let's get the fuck out of here! Can I rob him? Hold on. Hello? Hello? The man is still knocked out. He breathes slowly and steadily. It'll take a few moments for him to recover. Okay, let's get the fuck out. The man no, no. Let me let me through. Where are we going? 
Hello? Hello? Wait, did is it the door back here? Is that what opened? Or it is! Okay. Well okay. I think I think I'm gonna end it here for today.